check, 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 check. Check, check. Can you hear me out there all right? And this guy runs up to me and says, hey, AJ, what do you know? I said, there are three stuff that's going to be the problem. This is Ryan Doan, commentating for the Blue Chip Billiards to present the Hoosier Nine Ball Open Tour. This is top six at Brickyard Billiards. We've got Dennis Outlaw against Dwayne Pearson. Currently, the score is one to one. Let me go ahead and update that. All right, looks like we've got some kick at the six ball here. Looks like he's going to try to go two rails. Did contact the nine first, said it's going to be a foul, so that's going to be ball in hand. He's going to go ahead and give that game to Dwayne. For those out there watching, I want to make sure that we are live and make sure you guys hear me good. Go ahead and give me another comment. Don't forget to like and share the stream. Thank you to all of our sponsors. You can see those kind of flirting on the screen there on the left-hand side. Again, this is a race to six for Dennis and a race to seven for Dwayne. All right. Dwayne is a 645 Fargo and Dennis Outlaw is a 627. So he's two points above the limit to go Excuse me, excuse me. I don't know what I'm talking about. That's not true at all. It should be a 7-7 seven, seven race, shouldn't it? Uh, I think it's a 6-27 and a 6-45. Yeah, it's 7-7. Seven, seven. Looks like I'm going to update this. It is a, actually an even race, 7-7. Seven to seven. I just looked at the Fargos. Yep, so Dennis is just two points shy or ahead of only needing to go to six. That cutoff is 6.25. My apologies. All right, back to the game. It looks like there's no available pocket for the three. Unless I can't tell if that's the two ball there. Or the eight ball. Some notable wins on the high side. <clears throat> Let's see. Ryan Doan beat Jonah Bunch. Tanner Sandiford beat Kevin Wapner. A couple of buys on the top side. We're going to have Seth Burton playing... Ronnie Sogott, who was uh, fortunate enough to beat Troy Polding. He's in the loser's bracket. Based on the, the way the bracket turns out, I think it's going to be the next match up somewhere. Okay, he's going to thin this three ball and try to go in underneath the nine and seven, I think. Yep, all that spin did try to go underneath the nine, and he may have just left the outer edge of the three to be able to cut in. At the very least, it's going to be a pretty easy jump. You're only going to jump this, just the uh, right side of the nine ball, as we see here. On our on our screen, it's going to be the left side of the nine ball. 
I don't even think he's going to look at it. I think he's looking at the kick right off the bat. One rail, trying to go right into the three. Make that. We probably get good shape on the four. Oh, went right around it. So it's going to be ball in hand back to Dwayne Pearson. I don't really see many um, complications with this rack. You're going to see the three on the side, six down there in the top left corner as we see. They'll want to leave shape to either just nicely float down one rail from the six or two rails around um, from the six to the seven just to make sure he's got good shape. Could see him come about to the center of the table here. Should just come one rail back down. That'd be kind of angle that he has. Could open it up and go two rails if he wanted, but I'm thinking one rail back. There you go. The whole point of that is to guarantee your angle down on the seven so you can come back and get the eight in the side pocket. You're going to want to open up here to make sure you've got good shape on the eight to get down to the nine. See, that's why you open the stroke up. A lot of times people feel like, you know, when you sit on the rail, it's a, you know, a bad shot, but it's really not as long as you cue straight, you know, here in line. It's all straight cueing from here. Just going to float that down. Well, virtually straight in shape. Dennis is going to go ahead and give him that game. Give him some bracket shuffling. As soon as that's done, I'll update the score. The score is now 3-1 to one with Dennis Outlaw to break. If you're not playing today, just come on out and support everybody here. Come and watch live. You've got some great players in the house. Kane McBride, Ronnie Solgott, Trent Vaught, all great people to watch. Jonah Bunch is here. Fred Babcock is playing today. Jordan Davis is in the house. There's some, some uh, regulars throughout the tour. Some new faces today as well, so really pleased with the overall turnout on this pre-Easter tournament. It's a beautiful day outside, and that's almost a, a detriment to the um, table there up in the top of the screen. If you're shooting from the top, uh, top corner there, if somebody opens that door, you get blinded for a second. That's uh, Other than that, it's a great day outside. Definitely come check out uh, Brickyard Billiards. They got some really great pizza here. Kind of known, kind of their thing. Some nine footers you can play around on while you watch some great action. Good break. One ball on the side, another ball in the top corner. Looks like he's going to have half a pocket, maybe, for the three. So we're on the loser side already, so we're going to start back on the winner's side. Could play the three-nine combination. Um, that's probably got more of a pocket available, maybe, than the three does, but I don't really think he's going to want to do that. Um, if he can, you know, putting any spin on it here, if you only got, a, you know, three-quarters of a pocket or half a pocket. Yep, there you go. That's why you see him calling the nine. The eight looks like it's uh, in the way a little bit of the nine, but I think it'll cut in pretty good. The eight did get in the way, and I think the three does go up underneath the nine. Fortunate thing for Dennis is that the eight ball did come up and tie up the four a little bit, but you probably think that... Uh, He's going to play a safety on the three. I don't think he's going to opt to make it. I think that's why you saw him point over there. Oh, he tried to make the nine. Pretty routine little save here. You can shoot the two ball out, two rails, and then make the cue ball follow up underneath the five. It's not going to be anything that gets uh, 
probably a rack one because you're probably going to be able to hit the the three ball. Yep, there you go. Oh, he put a lot of spin on it, and when the spin took it, threw it off the rail there. You can see him laughing. He knew exactly as soon as he hit it. Big question here is does the carom off the 4 8 9 go? Could play the 3 up into the corner here and break everything out. That might have been what he was looking at. Really trusting the luck there as far as what kind of shape you're going to get, but such is the game of 9 ball. Good shot. Good breakout. Pretty, uh, pretty routine. Just needs to make one more good shot here. Probably just dumps the ball in. Takes the long cut shot on the six. Seven ball hanging in the pocket. That makes it pretty pretty easy. Yep. He's going to trust his queuing here. That's why he puts in all these hours of practice. Oh, excuse me. I didn't see the five up there. That was pretty good shape for the five then. Going to go one rail back down. This one will send two rails back towards the seven. He wants to kind of guarantee that he's going to be cutting the seven to the right. He doesn't want to get shooting the seven up, you know, up table at all. I see him spin it here. One, two. Yeah, and see, so he's still cutting it to the right. Depending on what kind of shape he's got, he can use the rail and come out easily. Based on the way his body language shows, the eight ball goes easily past the nine ball. One rail back out. Might just be a little funny with the angle going away from the uh, nine, but you just kind of pull back and take the cut shot. Yeah, just like that. Go ahead and trust your stroke, trust your, your talent. Just cut that ball in. All right, that is going to make it 4-1 for Dwayne Kirtan. Again, this is Ryan Doan commentating for the Hoosier 9-Ball Open Tour presented by Blue Tip Billiards. We are at stop six here at Brickyard Billiards. If you can hear any background noise, we've got Brandy Phelps talking up her baking talents. Definitely come on out and support Brandy and her baking. Um, Brickyard Billiards is, uh, is allowing her to sell her product out of here. We really love it. It's a really good snack in conjunction with their food. She's got cookies, cupcakes, and they're not just you know, the kind of cupcakes you buy at the store. They're great. She's uh, really, really talented. Definitely come check them out. Dwayne to break. Dennis is going to need some help from Dwayne here to get back in this match with the alternate break format. Pretty solid break from Dwayne. Can't tell. Oh, went ahead and shot the uh, one ball in off the double kiss. I can't tell based on the camera what kind of shot he's going to. Um, at the very least, if he can't see the full ball, it's an easy kick. And then kind of, you know, kick the two ball up between the rail and the four. And then leave the cue ball down there underneath it. Um, we could kick in between the rail and the four now and make it, and I think this might be what he's doing. Shooting that way is going to be pretty good for yep, shape on the three. Great shot. The only, the only issue here is now the nine's going to impede his progress to get to the four. I would expect him to maybe call the nine here, depending on the angle he's got. If he's able to flirt in between the nine and the seven, he's going to try and kiss the edge of the seven so that he goes towards the good side of the four here. Oh, he played the bank to guarantee his shapes. Okay, so that's the eight ball. So that explains why he shot that. Give him good shape on the five. You're going to see him play some inside spin and go towards the six here. 
Doesn't really want to get straight in, but doesn't really mind it either. Just going to pull this cue ball back. Make sure he's cutting the seven to the left. Guarantee the shape on the eight. There you go. You'll see him stun up, maybe touch the rail, and then back out of the rail for the uh, for the eight ball. Oops, just like that. See him stop it right there. Use the rail to to hold. Oops, excuse me. Had a little bit more angle than I thought. Good break and run from Dwayne here. Dennis is in trouble. No, that's good as hell. That looks, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. It's yours. But if it is good, I want one. Then it's going to be good. I just talked you up. I'm going to need one of those. Is that possible? Can I get one? Thank you. Sorry for the distraction. I got a new concoction over here by Brandy Feltz, and it had me distracted. So I had to go ahead and up on the train and get me one of those. Yeah. Yeah, Williams, why, why don't we ever get you in these tournaments? Are you out there at work on Saturdays? What's going on? We'd like to see you out here sometime competing. Looking at the low side, Bailey Moore played Ricky Gregg first round. Ricky was able to take that. Jason McAdams played Marty Weber, and Jason McAdams fell to Marty Weber. I believe McAdams may have won his following match. We'll see. John Wilson played Casey Deemer. Apologize if I'm saying anybody's name incorrectly. Um, Sean fell prey to Casey, so he moved on. Randy Burton is, played Pete Masker. Pete took that. Vince Pester played... Jonah Watson. Vince won that. Mr. Shoemaker played Brandy Bratz. Brandy took that win. Daryl Huff played Miranda Babcock, and Miranda Babcock fell to Daryl. June Cho played M. Bishop and beat Mr. Bishop. K.S. Lemons played Marcus Forlani, and Marcus lost. Kim Pearson played D. Bartlett. Kim lost to D. Bartlett. Sean McGrady played Steve Freaky, who just won Brian Gregg's um, Six and Under tournament, I believe. And that is the current yeah, score line as of now. All right, looks like Dennis is going to give Dwayne Ball in hand here. For a 2 9 combination to go up on the hill. For those watching, make sure you give me any recommendations or any thoughts in regards to what I'm doing, how to do better, how to. Thank you. How to best do this. I'm new to this kind of thing, but you know, my passion for billiards and pool really, really makes me. Oh my goodness, Dwayne missed that. Anyways, uh, it really makes me want to do this and, and continue to do it. I think you're going to see it, uh, Dennis fling at the nine here. He's going to try to bank the two in and then send the eight ball towards the nine. At this point, you know, being that you're down five to one, I wouldn't see why you wouldn't swing at it. Try to get something happening. You know, after after Dwayne just breaking ran, ran that rag, I wouldn't want to get him breaking, trying to win the set, would scare me too much. All in for the bank. With, with no reward. Let's 
see him kicking. One where I look at three. Bells going off throughout wall. I might be fortunate enough that the three nines not there, but probably gonna be a short ride. We're probably gonna have to do a little bit. The nines there. We can go ahead and pair them in. Take that easy ride. All right, that puts Dwayne Pearson up on the hill. Race seven. Yeah, it's been a it's been a combination of bad shooting. Dwayne's hooking him, getting ball in hand, running out. I think so. Well, I feel like he comes down and he plays Josh. He plays Josh and, you know, Josh Lady ends up catching him. Good old Dale Williams. Travaganza champion, Dale Williams. All right, Dennis to break. Excuse me, Dwayne to break. Last time he broke, it was a break and run. See if he can go ahead and break and run to win. Notable matches. We just had David Heiner play Jared Haney, and David Heiner did win that. Pretty solid break. Looks like he's going to have shape on the two ball. Yes. Looks like the three is tied up with the nine. Possibly able to bank that ball, though. So what you're going to see here, Dwayne is going to try and come off of the rail into the back end of the three and nine. He wants to hit it in such a way that the three comes to the left, and then the cue ball comes back to the right, hopefully ensuring shape there. He's going to run this rack. He's definitely going to have to earn this. That? With the shape that he's got, I think the bank's on. I think the bank is on. Because you can hit it bad, as long as your cue ball doesn't kiss, double kiss. It can go in off of this eight. Excuse me. And I think you're going to see him playing it at it. So he's going to put some bottom on it, try and pull it out. See him bank here, right underneath the, oh, it went. What a shot, Dwayne Pearson. I didn't think the three ball went. You're going to see him stun over for the eight and draw back a little bit. Yep, there's that stun. So see him play the eight real slow, just to come out one rail, nine ball in the other pocket. Put some insight on it to guarantee the shape. All right, we have a concession. Dennis Outlaw falls to Dwayne Pearson, seven to one. Seven to one. Dwayne shot pretty lights out. Dennis, Dennis made some mistakes there. Let him in. 
too many times with ball in hand. At that level, ball in hand will almost kill you every time. That one too, yeah. And then the last one got bigger. Oh, yeah. Alright. Bear with me, we're going to see what match is next on this TV table. Again, this is the Hoosier Nine Ball Open Tour presented by Blue Tip Billiards. This is stop six here at Brickyard Billiards. Thank you to all of our sponsors, all those watching online. Like I said definitely come out and support Brickyard. They've got great food. Oh, we've got a really good one here. We're going to have, I believe, just the norm maybe on, our, on the TV table against. Mike Davis Sr. Yep, that's what we're looking at. So, we're going to have Justin Moore against Mike Davis Sr. That will be a 6 7 race. Justin going to 6. Davis Sr. going to 7. No, I mean, and again, it was just Dennis gave Dwayne Ball in hand probably three or four times. And every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Personally, I've never watched Mike Davis Sr. play, but I know he plays jam up, obviously, not only by Fargo score, but just by reputation. So this will be a fun one to see. Justin Moore will shoot anything, anywhere, anytime. Hey, Mike. Put it on his Facebook page. Definitely like and support that. Justin the Pole Shark more. Those of you that don't know, uh, make sure you support Jason McAdams' new spot. It's, uh, that is actually called Our Spot Billiards. Um, you do need to become a member there. There are different membership types. Make sure you hit that man up. Address is 4005 Madison Avenue. That's going to be in Indianapolis. So. Make sure you check it out. It's on the southwest side. We've got two tables in there. Plans on getting a big nine-foot table. Let's see what's going on. Mr. Brian Gregg on the screen. Again, we thank him for all that he's done as far as sponsorships are involved. Big thing we're chasing here is to be in the top ten of the points for the Indy Cup that we're going to have. And that's going to have some really big sponsorships. We're going to have... Um, that done like a Moscone style type tournament. It's five on five qualifying spots. So that's what all of us are chasing. We really wanna, we really wanna do something. You know, whether it continues or whether it doesn't, you know, we wanna make history here in Indiana, and you know, try to do as much as we can for the game of billiards. June Show sitting here next to me on my left. Uh, how you doing, June? Oh, we're going to get Jude in the Tom Box. All right. What is good, everybody? We are here. Is his mic on? I can't hear him in mine, so I just wanted to make sure. All right, those of you out there, make sure you're... Well, yeah. I'm going to let the, uh, the magic man work his, his magic over here, but... If you can't hear him, June's in the in the booth with me. Uh, it's going to be a really good one. June, Justin versus Mike Davis Sr. Both are high-level players. Oh, uh, absolutely. You know, they again, I've never seen Mike Davis shoot myself. Again, based on reputation, I know the, the man shoots really, really well. Yeah, I've been watching him shoot. He's been shooting a lot of Wayne uh, over at John Wayne's uh, on the nine-foot quite a lot. Yeah, anytime I've ever seen him myself, he's been on the nine-footer in the back. Actually, he's also uh, what are you looking really for? Chase, Chase, okay. Chase. See, and I, I think one pocket's the, the best game. It's going to teach you everything you need to know about the game. Yeah. Saves, kicks. Yeah, to kick saves. How to leave somebody a, an open pocket, but you know how to leave them tough into that open pocket. It's a great game. You got to have patience and creativity. Oh yeah, that's for sure. All right, Mike Davis, senior to break. Don't think anything went down. All right. Going to have a decently uh, 
tough shot here on the one. The only reason I say tough shot is that shape on the two is not guaranteed. You might see him play for the two nine. If he was able to get to the right, or excuse me, left side of the cue ball, he'd be able to check it back and play the two in the same pocket. But I think we might see a two nine. Ooh. Uh, honestly, based on where he's at now, I don't think he shoots it. I think he's going to go ahead and cut that into the same pocket as the one. Might gamble and try and hit the nine ball, but I think the angle goes straight in between the, the nine and the eight into the pocket, so probably going to draw it back a little. I mean, the uh, three ball also looks pretty tough. Oh, he did play the nine. Oh, my goodness. And he might have left it. The only thing that can stop this is, like, if the nine ball is sitting on the point and you catch it just on the edge with the two, it might not go. It's pretty hard to tell. Yeah. It is, but honestly, man, I think I think you're going to see a 1-0 Mike Davis so Sr. All right, here we go. Oh, that was better, a better way to shoot it. Yep, all right, so we've got one. Senior and Justin Moore. Mm -hmm. Good match. Both of them on the first game. Yep. That's a pretty good little match. All right, so we've got Justin to break. Justin had the uh, first opportunity there. Just kind of went after something. And, I mean, that's... If I had any complaint about the way that, uh, you know, his fast and his style is that, man, sometimes those shots don't go. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? Yeah. If, uh, you know, if you're making hero shot after hero shot after hero shot, that's awesome. And, and honestly, we watched him do that. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes, man, you'll see it. He'll put a ball just like that. And just kind of lay it right up. Yep. So this is an ultimate big ball match. Meaning that, uh, you know, Mike Davis Sr. won the lag, so he's going to break first. And now they're going to, you know, exchange back every single time. Uh, the, one, the reason why this format is so hard to stay, you know, like winning in it is like you're going to, you, you can't just run out of set. Right. So, you know, I could come up against a Ronnie Solgott, right, who could beat me 9 nil easily because it's Ronnie Solgott. But I get a chance to, you know, sit there and at least, you know, play the, play the game with him. Yeah. And that's really why this tournament is so nice. I agree with that. It's, it's, uh, I think all the rules are set. It's very fair for all the players. Uh, I'm not saying that we're going to see a nine ball here, but I think we might see a one, seven, nine. So, like, the seven ball, he's going to hit the one ball maybe off the seven, and then it's going to carry him back into the nine. Hmm, okay. Yeah. That could be just about the way I see it. Now, the, the one and the seven might be dead, you know, lined up. And that's probably, you know, the better way to shoot it. Yeah, and I think it is. Oh, no. All right, so if you can see the little edge of the ball, that's the only thing that's going to stop it. Sorry, I got distracted by some peanut butter pie over there. I'll tell you, it's some of the best. It's, it's really, 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 really good. All right, so we're going to see a 1 9 combination here. And it's probably going to make the score line 1 1. Now, this is the 6 7 range. Mike Davis is spotting Justin Moore for the game. You know, when I shoot, you know, the nine ball a lot, if I can, um, I don't just full blood shoot the nine, right? I'm going to try and play in here, like a, a safety with it, right? So I'm yeah. like, I'm going to make the one ball try to come off the edge of the, the nine here. And then the cue ball needs to stay right in that area and behind the four, six, three, eight. Yep, exactly. A lot of people don't consider the two way position games. Yeah, and I mean, I, and honestly, if you're gonna play at a high level, if you want to play it, you have to do that. Yeah. Because you know, playing really loose. I mean, these dudes see the edge of a ball. You might not see another, another ball to shoot at till it's your turn to break. Right. <laughs> right. And again, so I think he's gonna stop the rock. Boom. Now, but again, so he missed, but exactly as I said. So you're gonna see a possible jump. But the five kind of makes that really hard. We aren't playing all ball fouls. It's cue ball fouls only. There is no three foul rule. Push out after the break. Um, if you no make the, on the break. Correct. If you make the nine ball on the break, uh, you have the option to spot that and re-break. Excuse me. Spot that or re-break. Not spot and re-break. That doesn't make sense. Oh, you do have a re-break. Yeah, you can. You cannot re-break? Oh, I lied. I lied. I was just, I was just told that we were not. 
I was wrong. Well, that's okay. We all are sometimes. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> listen. We had to move on. Just one day. Right. <laughs> Next season, we'll know who will be the champion. Listen, we got the jumper. Any spot to fill. Oh, he hit the ball. It stayed on the table somehow. And I think he's going to, yep, sell out. Sold the farm. Yeah. I mean, that was a tough jump as is. It was. But again, that's why, it's exactly why you play the combination the way that I was talking about and the way that he did. Yep. All right, so big thing here. Where's the four go? Um, you know, the four. Four nine. Four nine does go. I mean, we just saw him shoot a one nine, and it didn't go. I'd be scared to shoot nine balls combinations if I didn't have to. Doesn't want to touch that eight. Pretty good shot there. Oh, it's good, it's good. Might just draw it back a couple inches and just make the combo. Yeah, I mean, I don't really see, you know, if he's got the angle to, like, punch it over, you can punch it over and draw down for the four ball on the side. He got a little fortunate there just to keep a shot. Yeah. Big thing here, he's going to shoot the corner, and he's going to try and put some bottom and then come back in between the 9 and 6. Problem here is that when, you, you know, when you're know when you this close to the rail, in order to get that bottom, it's going to cause you to jack up a little bit. When you jack up, you're going to put a little bit of a, you know, a mass A on the ball, maybe. Yeah. Or you're especially just not going to hit where you want. Yeah, especially when you're hitting like in the middle of the alley, usually over to the right. Yeah. Shot. Yeah. That's my, that's my worst, you know. I try not to, to play for this if I don't have to ever. Yeah. Yep. Did come back between the nine and six, and it's going to get lucky. I think. Uh, I think. I don't know if he has it in the far corner. He I think he can just shank the side. He, he might be able to cut it in the side. I think he might have him snookered. Nope, he's shooting right at it. He's going to cut it in the side. Cut on the side. Don't go in. Cue ball. Don't go in. Mm. Early days in the set, but don't want that. Other notable matches we're going to have here. We've got Seth Burton up against Ronnie Sogon. Josh Lady against Ryan Doan. Trent Vaught and Tanner Standiford. Jackson Cook and Dwayne Pearson. Jordan Davis and John C. And Danny Heiner is waiting the winner of Fred Babcock and R. Vitani. Yeah, Vitani. Yeah, the first time I met Vitani, he was at the Derby City Classic. Oh, really? Yep, he was playing over there. And he, he has a very uh, very controlled stroke. Mm -hmm. um, he plays well, plays very well. Now, let's see, on the sheet here, he was 634. Pretty good run out by Mr. Moore there after ball in hand. That makes the scoreline 1-1 one, one with Mike Davis Sr. in the break. You know, Ryan, let me ask you a question. What's your thought on uh, giving up a nine ball? Mm -hmm. say, that, say that one more time. What's your thought on giving up a nine ball? Like, you know, just don't let, don't let them shoot it. I don't do it anymore. So, I mean, I'll do it if I really respect the player. Like, if I have a good, like, a good friendship with him. And so I don't mean, like, somebody I don't like or anything like that. But, you know, if I'm playing Fred, I'm probably going to give him that. If he's pretty straight in. But yeah. in this tournament, I don't, I don't give people the friendship. Yeah. Because, I mean, you never know. I mean, all it takes is a twitch. Yeah. You know, your back twitches and yes. your gun, you might miss. Yes. You know, yes. maybe you, maybe you, you, you cued kind of crooked, put some spin on the yeah. nine, and whoop. I mean, it also comes to a point where, like, you never know. Like, solid break. Somebody, somebody gets upset. Dude, dude, I think it's solid break. Oh, didn't mean to interrupt you. That's okay. Go ahead. What were you saying? So, like, you know, like right on the nine ball, if somebody to, to the table next to you gets upset and they scream something, you know, and it makes you jump, I know it's bad. You know, yeah, you really think yeah. that way, but you just never know what's going to happen. Look, man, I'm going to be honest with you. I've won all kinds of different ways, and as long as I'm still in the tournament, I don't care anymore. Yeah, I'm the same way. <laughs> I've lost to a lot of really bad luck, and I've won to some really bad luck. Yeah. And the older that I get and the more that I play, you just you have to run with it. Man, sometimes boy. the tournament's going to be your tournament to get lucky, and sometimes yeah. it's going to be your tournament to go to and out because you, you couldn't get it. Yeah. Really good shot there back and forth. And it's even and it's even more like that with nine ball. Mm -hmm. The balls are so vital to the shot. It's a little bit weird here. I don't like going the two rails that he went. The only reason I say that is I think that's the four ball he's cutting 
back into the yeah, into the, yeah. The yeah and so he's gonna have to play two to three rails around for the combination and um hmm. let's see I'm right again. so he's not gonna get lucky I don't think the five got tied up. I don't know if that five up goes by that. What's that ball saying? I think that's going to be the state ball. The nice thing here is the five does go into the lower pocket. But, I mean, where he's queuing, that's that's tough. Good shot. He might play for the bank here. I don't really like that with that angle. But I think he's, he's going to cut it all the way down. Oh, he did play for the bank. Went full-blooded for it. And got lucky. Well, that's what we were talking about too with like the middles playing dual moves. Yeah. You know, I don't think he really, I don't think he really was talking. No, but I mean, to be fair, you know, if you watch Justin play, um, that's just how he plays. I see. There's that not a, that's a fantastic cut, but we didn't make it there. I was going to sell the farm. Uh, but no, yeah, I mean, that's just how Justin plays. Uh, he's 100% committed to whatever he decides. I don't really ever see him, like, second guess himself. Yeah. You know? That's a very big and strong shape, honestly. Yeah, thinking you can make every ball. I mean, that's why Josh Viller is so just goddamn good. I mean, he just knows. Yeah. You know, I can do whatever. Yeah, yeah for sure. No, I'll drill this. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, you know, there, there are things to be said about being able to do the crazy Facebook cut shots and whatnot, um, you know, and teach their own. You know, if that's what you want to do, go for it. But when you're out at these tournaments, you know, you're not going to have those crazy cut shots. But knowing that you can make them, mm -hmm. just have confidence in the yeah. stones to say, hey, sit down in your chair. I'm not letting you get up. <laughs> yeah, right. And I'm going to go ahead and run out with this. God, you know, and it, it's deflating. Yeah. All right. Update on the score here. We've got two to one. Justin Moore. Justin Moore. Again, thank you to all the sponsors that you see over on the left side of the screen. You see Jay Flowers, Custom Cues. Currently, again, this is the Hoosier Nine Ball Open Tour presented by Blue Chip Billiards. We're at stop six at Brickyard Billiards. One thing that the alternate break format guarantees is that you're not really, I mean, yes, you could have some quick sets, but they're not going to be bang, bang, bang got somebody that runs a seven pack on you in 30 minutes you know you're gonna have that's right mike davis jr i can't tell him that but you can you come in here and support him yourself <laughs> shoots good man he shoots good he just has such extensive knowledge his son, Mike Davis Jr., is also I know Mike uh, likes to travel to all those you know, different kind of tournaments around. You know, and he always brings back, look, there he is. I'm sorry, is that Amabama? Amabama. I think you've been Ala and I think you've been at Alabama for too long. All right, really, really good break. Um, Full ball hooked on the two. You might see him go ahead and full ball to jump at this. I don't really see where you can push out and get the shot back. Uh, you might be able to push out to the bank down up underneath the five, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then maybe you get that back. I'm not giving it back. You're not giving it back. I mean, I think the only thing to do is maybe push the cue ball further this way to maybe give yourself an easier jump. But the problem is whatever you do for you is the same for them. Just like us running back to that back. <laughs> no. And really, if you don't want to go full butted at the bank here, playing safe isn't bad. Right. See? Well, that though. Hmm. 
was thin. It was, it was quite thin. It was? Is he going to get a roll? He did. Okay. That's, that's what we were talking about with the, with the luck rolls, man. But, I mean, that, again, that's nine ball. Yeah, exactly. Had a little bit of a glitch on the stream there. Banked the two ball up. Really good shot. Yep. Really good shot. Six ball cuts off the kick with the nine ball. You can't go up underneath. So I don't really see any offensive, like, try to kick out here. Mr. Davis, uh, Jr., that is going to be Ryan Doan and June Cho in the booth for you. We're here. When I'm not playing in my matches, I'm going to be in here commentating. Trying to just give some sound so that, you know, it's a little bit better for the viewership. I know just staring at the, the quiet screen is <laughs> tough to watch. <laughs> Start snoring. <laughs> so he is going to lightly kick, make no contact, going to get ball in hand. Pretty routine out here, so you're going to see him cut the four, go in between the five and the seven for the shape for the five side. Oh, went ahead and just kept it simple so he can play it in the corner, then play the six in the side. And honestly, you're a little tough here. So yeah. it's a thin cut. Um, the bank is on for sure. Um, you're playing for the seven in the pocket closest to us here. Yep, just like that. Want to guarantee your shape there. Anytime you shoot that, over hitting the ball, you know, feels like oh, I don't want to do that. But you, you know, over hitting is way better than under hitting to guarantee the the shape. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the biggest thing. Um, keeping it simple, you know, just kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's truly the best thing to do in the game. You know, I I can do some crazy stuff, but I, that's why I miss too, is because I can do some crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. You just try way too hard, and yeah, and I mean sometimes trying trying hard, like having a hundred percent commitment on stuff, is cool. But, you know, when you got to have hero shot after hero shot, like we were talking earlier, you're not going to get it. 2-2 two, two is our current score line. Playing pool in itself is a gamble. And then you're going to try hero shots and then you're just adding to it. Well, you know, and each table plays different. I don't care if it's the same brand. Or, you know, somebody could have sat on the rails over here. Could have spilled the drink over here. Well, not in this place. They don't, they'll kick you out. But. Yeah, true. <laughs> One nice thing about uh, Brick Cards, they have one of the big square uh, bright lights, like uh, I think it's a Hitman light. Yeah. That uh, you see on the Matchroom tours and the Predator tours. They went ahead and got the gray felt, like you see Matchroom doing, and they went ahead and felted their table back there and made it some pro cut rails. Yeah. Um, you know, if you just want to kind of experience something similar to what the pros are out there playing on in those matches, come check it out. Day by the hour, so you can just come check it out for a little bit and that go do something else. Dry break. I don't see anything offensive, although um, my play here is I'm going to bank the one straight back, like towards the seven, and then keep the cue ball where he's going to put the one ball. The reason I play the other way is now he's tied everything up. Right? So yes, you're going to get ball in hand back, but you're going to have to do something again to break all that stuff out. Where if you play the other way and you play the cue ball there, you're most likely going to get ball in hand and you don't have to do anything crazy. Everything went eventually. Yeah. Maybe even play a, you know, a 1-9 or something, depending yeah. on what's down there. And again, it, it's all about the kind of player that you are. Um, you know, if you're really patient and you're, you know, very creative, this is fine too. See, and now it just... Yeah. And so you're not playing three fouls. Right, so you can just play all the long. Yeah. So you can't, you know, where the safety looked like it was really good at first, not so much. And that's just, you know, you have that at that higher level, which which ball to put where. And that's the challenging part, playing the percentages, knowing when to do which. Yeah, sure. That's kind of one of the big things that gets me. Uh, it's like 
safeties. Once people start playing those safeties where they just bunch everything together, yeah. it's real hard to figure out a way to open okay. it up in a way to not give them shot. You know what I mean? Just consistently doing that just slowly and surely. You know? Well, the, the problem here, too, is that like when you're playing somebody that's a high high level player, like I think Mike actually, you actually Mike just asked with us in three pal. But um, you know when you're playing somebody like Mike, he's not gonna just bust it open. Right, right. You know, so like this is where playing one pocket would help because you're okay. How am I gonna get a shot five shots from him? What's my opponent gonna do if I put the cue ball over here? If I touch a ball, you know, you're gonna see him lightly kick here and just try to touch the one. Nope, hit the five. And again, but even the light kick, that's why he does it so light, you don't break everything out. You know, a little bit ago, the one and the three went, but it doesn't go now because he moved them. You know, the five ball makes it tough for you to do anything with the cue ball now because the five's in the way. I used to think with something like having white and like a one or two just pop up. Two for two. <laughs> but but to what future does that you know what I mean right. like you know in, to any I don't care anybody at home if you you know like it's cool yeah the shot's there but you got to think what you're gonna do the next shot of the shot after that yeah you know where is the one ball gonna go right yeah okay cool I'm gonna give it another shot but now I gotta do something crazy again and yeah. maybe sell out this is a good option ooh you said the county was sold out I did not think. But that's what how that was going. I thought he was going to play just a little bit outside of that. Hook him with the five. One ball's got to go. Alright, if I can guess, you're going to see Justin go ahead and full blooded shoot at this and try to break the two out. You're going to see him dig on the ball. Go into the rail and into the two. Boom. Shot. Shot. You guys can't hear it, but I clapped. So I <laughs> Alright, so here, the biggest thing is how do we guarantee not getting behind the 9-6, or excuse me, 9-8 and 7. Um, probably going to draw out of it, go two railed out. Nope, didn't have that angle, but that's fine. Float this one in the side. I think I'd actually probably shoot this one in the corner myself. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you having me commentate here in the booth, but I have to go into my match. Good luck, sir. I'll Thank see you when you get done. I appreciate yep. you. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to stay here until I get called up. I think I might be possibly close to next. to spin this doesn't want to have too much speed and get behind the eight and it looks like he might have too much no okay doesn't want to scratch in the side here so you might see him play some bottom yep it looks like i'm up myself so see you guys when i'm done
testing, testing. Okay, here we are to Hoosier Nine Ball Tour. Fifty some players on Easter weekend. Um, was going to have probably a eighty player field or so, but reduced because of Easter. But uh, up here on the TV table, we have Jordan Davis, John Zawatsky. Jordan took first game. This tough match. Uh, John missed that seven ball in the corner. Was he watching? I didn't catch that one, no. Oh, speaking of which, we have Mr. Rackham Joe here with you. My man. John, please. John cool. hits it pretty good. Uh, Jordan's got a tough uh, hill to climb. I think I can hear you. Check, check. Test, test. Can you hear me, Joe? It's trying to. That's all right. I'll, I'll play with it while we're talking around here so we can get it straightened out. But anyway, like I was saying, is, is Jordan's got a tough hill with it being alternate break, him going to nine and John only going to six. John hits the balls pretty good. Very good. Yeah, I don't think Mike's on. Mr. Ronnie Saw Guy, you get a chance, I'm going to get you in the booth. about now check 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 all right yeah it's moving now it should be working what about mine yeah okay yeah good um who do we see here um mike davis no you're good i'm still messing around you're good mike you davis talking. jr watching pops Jason A. Robbins, Brandon Thomas. What's up, buddy? We would have loved to see you make it today. It's been a good one for you. Pretty good players here on that high side. Score. Well, right here, it looks like Jordan got ball in hand. I don't see why he wouldn't get out. Um, four ball. Right, looks like he played a four nine. I do believe Mr. Jordan Davis went for the blind bid today. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought he'd get out there. That wasn't too complicated there. Um, this John Zawaski, I watched him play our last tournament. Boy, he played really good. I would have to feel, though, that, you know, Jordan gave him a little, a little pressure. He's probably feeling it up there. Played in the low board the last tournament. His Fargo went up, and now he's in the high board. Oh, I didn't notice that. He was in the, yeah, that's right. He played in the low board last year. Now he's up with the big boys. Oh, good break. 
bought that cue ball. Looks like he might have a shot on the one. It looks awful close. I don't think he can get to that one, though. Might be able to see the edge of it, but. Oh, it was the two. Okay, see, I thought that ball down here was the one. I would say here, looks like he's trying to get down through between that nine and four. A little inside English, come back around, boom, there it goes. Yep. Yeah. Still looks like he's got a free bank here. When I say free, he's got that seven ball to play a defense behind in case he misses it. But he could play the four real slow and then go down behind the nine six where that seven nine six might be. No, he definitely oh, he went, went for it. it. I thought he played safe there. Oh, he went for it and he got a lead. He did play safe. He did. <laughs> That wasn't the free bank I was talking about. <laughs> and it worked out pretty solid. Pretty good turnout considering the Easter weekend, but after uh, six stops, we got 3,800 in the pot for the points race. Somebody's going to be a happy camper at the end of this tour. Still anybody's game in that points race. Yeah. Any, any of the top ten could win. You know, actually, somebody come into this tournament today that's not in the points race could probably win it if they was to win a couple. Of if, these if, if they win, yeah, if they yeah. win that, win out. The one I look forward to jumping up in that points race after today is Trent Vaught. Yeah, he's come up quite a bit. Yes, he's missed a couple of events. Now, if I'm uh, if I'm Jordan here, I'm gonna play the four on the side, and I'm gonna run into that seven. Yeah, try to separate the balls. Separate them balls, and that way he's got automatic shape after shooting the five. I'm not sure he's gonna look. Well, I think he's looking at it now. Hard to tell from the angle we got, but I thought he was putting it too straight in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh. That was close. Yes, it was. I forgot to update the uh, score. I think George's on two. Perfect. to the end round, come back out. Don't look like he's going to get there. Well, he's already... Not sure what's going on with it. It ain't doing it over here. No. Now this one makes this race tough. Uh, Jordan going, getting on three, mm -hmm. and now it's an even six-six race. Yeah. No. It's now it's Jordan did what he needed to do to be able to. Absolutely. Not sure why that one? Why you know, if, if John comes out and wins that first game or two, it oh, really yeah, gets tough for, for sure. Jordan come out getting them three games and making an even race. I mean, that's well, that's what he has to do. He need John. What John missed a seven ball, the, the one rack or something, right? Yes. No. Yeah, he missed it in the corner, first game. Yeah, he shouldn't have missed it. I mean, it wasn't an easy, easy shot, but mm -hmm. still could have made it. He hasn't really got back to the table since, except kicked two balls. Mm -hmm. Jordan got that fortune to roll. 
let him stuck. Ain't nothing he could do about that. No error on his part there. Right. Next pocket of ball. Well, here we go. John's kicking again. That's a good way to put put a guy out of stroke when, when, you, when you spend the most time kicking and stuff, you know? <laughs> well, I didn't realize that three players are tied in the points list. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's tight. Number two, number three, and number four. And you got first place Chase Haney with 66 points. Troy Pullian in second place with 61. Danny Alexander, we might as well say, second place with 61. You got a three way tie for second place. Yeah. Marty Weber's got 61 points. And you got Ryan Doan with 57. I actually look forward to Marty Weber jumping up a little bit on this only because he, Troy and Danny's on that high side. Mm -hmm. You know, Troy, he's already lost a match. You never know how, know right. how it's going to go with him. Uh, Marty Weber playing on that low side. Yeah, he, you know, he's been hitting the balls pretty good the last few events. Well, he won, not the last one, but the one before he won, right? Jordan's kicking. Oh, what a shot. Boy, that's tough to fade right there. I do appreciate everybody tuning in. We shout out to our sponsors, Blue Tip Billiards, Diamond Billiard Products, J Flowers Pool Cues and Cases, Stoltman's Custom Cues and Repairs, IMOJEQ, Animation, Indie Expert Construction, and 812's Top Notch Tree Service. Ryan lost seven to four. Josh Lady, that's a pretty good matchup. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Ryan, don't come out firing today. You beat Jonah Bunch first match. He's feeling good. Then he come up against uh, Josh Lady. Josh Lady just beat him seven to four. Well, Ryan, tough loss there, buddy, but you're still in there. Yeah, to be honest with you, man, the first uh, first two or three games, I didn't shoot real good. Um, kept going back and forth, and he, I think I went down like four to one or something like that. So, uh -huh. I mean, he made some mistakes, and I started shooting better, but he broke and ran the last two of his breaks to win, so nothing I can do about that. You can't take nothing away from Josh. Josh does it really well in all these tournaments. He's a good player, so. Yeah, I mean, as far as he keeps going up and up and up, and, you know, he's competing, and. Yeah. Could have went showing, either way. You're showing why he's supposed to be there. 
this right here, right here we got Mr. Jordan Davis, John Zawaski. Uh, Jordan won the first three games, so it's now a six-six race. But it looks like John's going to get out. Yeah, that's got a little got a little unfortunate to get on the rail there, but should be able to handle this no problem. All right. Looks like we're going to have John go up a game. So current score is three to one. So here we are at three to one, Mr. Jordan Davis. Don't know if you all know, but we got Mr. Ryan John in the booth. Hi, guys. I'm back. That's right. Jordan Davis is one of the premier players here in Indiana, so it's always a pleasure to watch him do what he does. I think, is he the highest uh, rated Fargo we have in, in the tournament? It is, and he's the only player in Indiana that's beat better Gores. Yeah, I'd take that title and I'd put it on shirts. Oh, absolutely. And what's <laughs> crazy about it is the second set, he got beat 9-7 to seven mm -hmm. in that tournament, but it was 7-7, seven to seven, and Jordan could have went up 8-7. It was a little mistake, so he very well could have beat him both times. Looks like we broke dry here. Um, is that the 5 and the 7 tied up, or was it dry? Nope, looks like the 3 went down. Yes. Pretty good shape to, to get to the two here from the one. Just needs to avoid scratching. Let's play two rails around. Actually, Ryan, I think that's the three down there behind Is the Is that seven. the three? Yeah, because I think the five's right here by the four. Oh, okay. Sorry, oh, yeah, folks. I think you're right. It's a little bit hard. We have a small screen, but we had the big screen up earlier, and it was lagging too much, so. All right, here, like I said, right around, boom. That's not bad. No. We'll yeah. know how he shoots us, which one of those balls it is. There. Right. Well, I mean, he's going to play down. I, knowing, at least watching him play when I was over at the other table, he's being really aggressive. So I'm, I'm thinking he's going to play down for the bank. Yep. I mean, if you end up getting real good on the bank, you just stop the cue ball, shoot the 5 9. You're feeling real froggy. Yeah. Just like that. Joe, since you got the mouse, if you want to update that 3 to 1. Uh, right there. All right. Yep, he did shoot the bank, and he didn't. He didn't make it, so it looks like he might have sold the farm here. Need him to move so we can see. All right. So, but the ball not being on the rail, that's a, it's a pretty good chance for John Z. Wants to play the cue ball. Back and forth, two rails, two or three rails. Really to hold kind of straight in ish for the five. The if Please you play back and forth on the floor. and you come good on it again, that five nine, it looks playable from here at least. You know, if the cue ball were to sit exactly where it was, I, you know, the five nine doesn't look bad. What I miss here, Ryan, what Jordan do? Jordan tried to bank the ball and missed. Yeah. And that's it. So I haven't been too far. Oh. Key shots, Ryan, at that caliper player. You probably are never supposed to miss those, especially against Jordan. No, and I mean, it's those little rolls, man, that will really determine sets sometimes. Yeah, it's not that, really the best. I don't really like how he played that. Me neither. Because Being against that rail like yeah, that. Yeah, because if you're going to stop the ball, which I don't think he's going to stop it. It looks like he might be pretty straight in, so you just play a high ball, follow it through, and then you're going to probably shoot the six in the opposite corner. Ooh, was that's the reason why you Is don't the go on the rail off at three, just for that particular yeah. reason. Oh, I didn't think that was the four. I thought that was the six. But yeah, either way, exactly. Yeah, exactly why. And really came up with a primo roll. Yep. Now, what I would try to do here is I'm trying to kick side rail, kick it to the in rail, over, and come between the seven and five if I can. And leave the cue ball about where the four is. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think, you know, if you try to kick it in and make it, the scratch is really big yes. coming off the ball. Um, yeah, I'm playing, trying to come straight in full, full into it. Um, here. No, that's not going to do it. Got kind of lucky that the four didn't pass the five, but we're going to see him cut the forward probably into the side. Game 
Bartlow just came out and said he won. Were you going to ask him what his score was? I wrote his name down, Bartlow. All right, thin cut. You're going to put probably a lot of bottom. Yep, a lot of bottom to pull into that rail and out. Pretty nice shot. Absolutely. He's going to have to make a really, you know, honestly, another good one here. Um, you could play into the in rail down and out for the seven, but I think he's going to stroke the ball and try to probably miss the middle pocket. After missing that last long one, he's not going to miss this one. No. That, again, I think it's down into the rail and back out. Oh, he held it. That's kind of the other way I was staying playing it. You know, he kind of got lucky to get a decent roll, but really, the shape on the eight's not, not a gimme here. He's going to have to probably play short side. Just kind of ease up a little and then just just cut it. Just roll up a little, just like that. Yeah, but see, see, look where he is. Look where he is. Made it tough, tough, didn't it? That's tough. Paul Hendricks, Barbara, are they done with Paul Klein? Uh, you got the lineup? Can you send that to my messenger? I'm not really sure if this ball is playable. Yeah, it's not. He's going to play safe here, guys. He's going back down the in rail, isn't he? Yeah, I think he's going to try to go one, two, three, four, five rails underneath the nine. If he can thin it enough. Now, I'll tell you, he does have an option to just roll up and tap it, but that leaves the kick cross corner if he, yeah. if he don't get it right. All right, here we go. One, two. Oh, what a shot. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, Brian Gregg. I'm flying. I'm shooting this I'm ball. Going. Well, and I mean, again, you're playing Jordan Davis, right? So, like, any chance you got to get, you got to take. I mean, there's maybe banking the eight towards the nine, but you can't really secure that. Yeah, you cut. You got to cut at the ball. Pray to God you don't scratch somewhere. The nine ball's in front of the side, so you got to just hope for the best. How do you feel, John Z? Let's see. Thrilled it. What a shot, John Z. Oh, he blew, didn't he? Just like we said. Now he's going to get funny on the nine. Really, the only spot that the nine isn't super easy into the side pocket here is probably kind of that whole zone that he's in right now. It's hard to play bottom because you're going to like your tendency mentally is to kind of let up on the stroke to try and help the bottom take if you're going to cut it up in the corner. But I, I think he's going to fly on the side. Want to watch the cue ball two rails into the side or three rails into the corner, though. If you leave that open, that's way to get you the TPA. Good shot. All right, Kevin. Current scoreline is two to three. I want to set in the rest of this match with Ryan, uh, Jordan Davis, playing John. Can we just talk about it? We're going to have Brian Gray come out of the booth a little bit here. I think we're going to have Kevin Wampner pop in for a little bit. Kevin on the I'm going to have Kevin tell us a little bit about how him and Tanner's match went. He was telling the whole pool hall about it, so let's see if he wants to tell the, the viewing fans. <laughs> well, you know, you know, it's a, another typical Kevin Wagner. He blows up in the end. <laughs> Other than that, uh, you know, I, I played pretty bad. Well, you know, it, it, that's part of nine ball, man. Sometimes you play really good. Sometimes you play bad. Sometimes you get real bad luck. Yep, all of those happened. <laughs> Big but, thing, man. Uh, John just cut the nine ball in that side pocket there. Go up another game. Jordan went up. Yeah, score's good. Uh, Jordan did win the first three, so we've had a little bit of fight back. Had some uncharacteristic Jordan Davis positional errors, to be quite frank with you, man. It's really cost him that last rank. I haven't seen uh, Jordan around for a while. I wonder if he's uh, been playing. 
All right, John Z to break. Often for that kind of straight on head break rather than the cut break. Typically sends the nine ball towards the pocket that way. Didn't really get any good roll off the break though. Where do you push, Kevin? Yeah, you're the expert here. A little bit over me. I don't play. I haven't been on the planet as long as you, so I'd say you got me on experience. You kind of push over kind of where his hand is? Either that or you could push to the jump shot, but... Uh, yeah, I don't think you really want to push to Jordan Davis jumping, do you? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> or is that the one ball he's cutting at? Oh! He kicked at it. Wow. And honestly, man, kudos to the Stones to kick at it like that. Turned out too bad. No. Really not an easy, easy safety back. I mean, you could try and play like a little touchy safe. Maybe make the one ball go in between the rail and the ball, but I think you're going to sell out something there. Definitely nothing offensive here. Problem is, where do you, like, you don't want to leave anything to have him shoot towards the nine. With it hanging over the pocket like that. You know, I don't know, you or I would fling at the nine, but John might, figuring he's got so much weight. Why not? Could play the combination, too. Really doesn't lay bad to play, does it? I like the carom a little bit better than the combination. It's hard to tell from the angle whether the carom really goes. Just being, a, you know, we're not right behind it, but it might. I think he's shooting at the combo. Oh, no. It's not an easy table. A few good shots. I think he'd be in line, but well, the one set. Can't really blame him. It'd be hard to get down on that three. Yeah. Five and the seven are big balls here coming around. Excuse me, five and the six. Is that the six there? It's like four. It's definitely a, a, a ball of some kind. <laughs> kind of hit it a little soft there, didn't he? Oh, he's perfect. He's perfect. That's the seven ball. So three's not even on the table anymore. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying now. You did? To who? Notable matches, Jason McAdams just fell out of the tournament to David Heiner. He moves on. Looking pretty good over here, though, on the TV table. Just wants to miss the seven. Right? That'd be nice. Got a little funny here, though. A ball cut. Did he call the nine? Oh, but what a shot. Jordan wow. Davis. A lock-up safety. Three rails behind the nine. Wow. It would take the magician to figure this one out. <laughs> I think I'm thinking... Three rails at it, you're gonna like. I don't even know. Yeah, that's tough.
Yes, Brian Flores, that was sick. You are correct. That's why he is the highest Fargo rated player here. He can do stuff like that. You know, it's really wild about the alternate rate format is like you can have a, somebody pull off a shot like that and it really, in the grand scheme of things, maybe not matter so much with the alternate break format, but. Oh my gosh. Wow, what a hit. Oh my gosh. Oh, and it railed. Fantastic, fantastic hit. I feel like that was just as sick as the safe. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> I didn't see it. No, well, are we going to give him the new nickname? We should. Little Magician? The Magician the second, right there. <laughs> Playing the bank? It's not really a bad lead. No. You drink. It's no. a hard shot. Playing the cut. Oh, you made it look easy. Got a jelly roll. Shot, Jordan. One rail back out. Keep it simple. That's correct. All right, ladies and gentlemen, after a couple of good series of shots there from both players, Jordan's going to take a 4-2 to two lead. Again, this is the Hoosier 9-Ball Open Tour presented by Blue Tip Billiards. This is stop six at Brickyard Billiards. We've got Ryan Doan and Kevin Wapner here in the booth calling the shots. Somebody's ring camera is super loud, I'll tell you what, I keep hearing it. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you're John Z, all you got to do is just try to keep as positive mind, like mentally as you can. You know, knowing like at least you're going to be able to try and break and run this, at least the next game. You know, Jordan's fantastic, so any opportunity you get, you try to capitalize on as much as you can. Again, just to hit the ball the way he did in the last rack, though. Kudos, to John Z. All right, Jordan's opting to do the cup break, trying to make the one on the side. Just like that. Pretty good break. Is it going to get spoiled? Oh. I think the A-ball came and spoiled the party, but I think we're going to see a jump shot maybe, unless that's the two straight in the side. It's hard to tell with the camera. I think it is the two. It's not the two, is it? His body language says that's the two. From here, I think the three ball is virtually impossible to get on to make offensively. He's able to stop the ball there somehow, right in, you know, maybe play the two and then cut cut into the five. Probably hold the cue ball underneath the nine, possibly. Apologize for the little lag in stream. I'm gonna thank thank Obama for that. <laughs> I mean, you can be super aggressive and try to get shape for the three from here, but I, don't, I still know how. I think I would just play shape on the safe. Yeah. Seems like he's loading up. Oh my. Oh. Sometimes pushing the boat out, we could drown, y'all. Keep it simple. Yep. All right, this is like I was saying though, when John gets an opportunity, he's got to take that and run with it. And honestly, you make a good opening shot off the three. Actually, the three nine carom, so probably there. I don't think you see that. 
That's pretty easy run out from here. You got yep. the three, four, five, and the whatever that one is. I think it's the eight. Yeah, I think you get a good opening here. I don't really see. Come around three runs to scratch. She did. Stun in between the seven and the nine here. Yeah. So that's the four he's playing for right now. Really good shot to get where you do that. Doesn't want to be straight in here. Doesn't look like he is, so it looks like he can manipulate off of it a little bit. Really wants to play the five on the side, but I don't know if he can get there. Mm, not the best kind of roll. Gonna really try and dig in this ball, try to pull it into the rail and back out for the six. Not a bad shot. Oh, it looks like he's on the seven. Excuse me. So that's the eight ball over there, but I thought it was the six. Good old camera. Really wants to make sure he's got an angle to go. Ooh. Used all the pocket there. He's in. He's in a tough spot. You got to scratch two different ways. You can scratch going forward. You can scratch trying to draw back into the side. Actually, you can scratch three ways, and you can scratch in the corner where he's at right now. If you put too much draw on it. Yeah, naturally, you could uh, cut this for center angle, just double the corner, go around, and play short side on a nine. Just like that, but he missed the shot. All right, Mr. Davis, can you shoot it and get back down kind of where he's at on either side? Really, he just wants an opportunity to cut it from somewhere. Biggest thing about this, make sure you stay down on your shot. Don't jump up. Oh, 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 no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. oh Jordan Davis, what are you doing? All right, ladies and gentlemen, after a crazy mistake unforeseen by Jordan Davis, that makes our score line three to four. Wow, that was unexpected. Unbelievable. Crazy game of nine ball. I think he was worried about... I don't even know what, why he put so much inside on it to try and get there. Maybe, you know, it's hard to see the angle that he had. Maybe he just was pretty straight in. And... Well, I think if he, if he could play it like that, he should have just swung it three rails yeah. around. Yeah. Almost assured you're not going to get a scratch. Yeah, I mean... Well, in comparison, like, you play the shot he played in the side and try to go three rows around versus not shooting that one. It's kind of surprising, really. Yeah. Unless that's in his brain. Oh, last time I went three rails and scratched. All right, John's changing his break a little bit. Got a lot of top spin on that. Well, if you're going to break dry, it's not bad to hook your opponent. Or did he make a ball off the break? Yeah, he made a ball. Okay, okay. Well, I lied. That's the worst way to break. Okay. 
problem with this kicking in behind this is there's, I don't really see anywhere you can get safe from. Unless he thinks he can cut it in. Looks like Dwayne Pearson just took down Jackson Cook in the winner's bracket of the high side. 7-2. He's going to send Mr. Cook over to the loser's bracket. All right, looks like we've got some balls tied up there at the bottom of the table. I'm not really sure if that ball goes next to the eight. Thinking the ball goes based on kind of just his overall body language. I'm sure he's looked at it three or four times as he walked around the table, but really, oh. It's kind of how I thought he was going to play it, but doesn't want to get jacked up over the five, so that's good. Sometimes you got to get your feet wet and compete. Something being said, looks like we're going to get Brian Gregg to watch the shot. Ball probably goes clean. That's probably just John Z trying to play the mental game. All right, Mr. Joe Watson on, on screen. Make sure he gets the beard out of the way. It's almost too long. Great job. Still some work to do, though. You probably just kind of kill this ball and leave yourself a tough cut on the eight. It's tough to go all the way up and down, though. Doesn't really want to touch the nine ball here. Oh, came out smelling like a rose, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I think he's a little hooked from the nine there. You think so? Yeah. He might be. Mm, you're right, Kevin, he is. I thought he could see the ball. If you can't, it's not really a hard safe. Yeah. Pretty sporty. I've not seen John Z with the jump cube before. But I will tell you, Spears this A ball in. I'm going to have to take the headset off because I'm going to scream. Holy shit. <laughs> Sometimes, man, it's not just the shots. It's like when you're playing somebody else, like a you know a Jordan or you know a Ronnie or something, and then you, you do drill a ball like that. 
I'll lose the tournament and just feel like I won. Right. Foul. Uh, you could just about put this one in the books. I'd be, I'd be really surprised. <laughs> Kevin, looks like you guys um, are up next. You and Jackson Cook. How you feel about that one? Got nowhere to go but up. <laughs> I like it. Jackson plays pretty sp pretty sporty too. Uh, yeah. All uh, all respect to him. We're, we're having a, a split bracket tournament here in a couple weeks in April, and uh, he would have been on the lower side of the bracket, but he asked to play along with all the monsters. So respect, to Mr. Cook. What's the sports heat up? It does actually. I got a little distracted talking. Five to three. See, we've got Zach Taylor, Julie Harder, Brian Flores, Brandon Thomas is watching, watching a little bit ago. Jason Robbins. That's because I'm sitting here. What are you talking about? Everybody, Brian? everybody just wants to hear Kevin tell some stories. I'm sure he's got plenty. Well, they're probably not half of them's any good, so I better just leave it like it is. Jordan Davis to break didn't really look like a very productive break there. Spread some balls, but didn't make anything. Like any knows. Gene Pittman, we miss you, buddy. We wish you were here with us. Good old Gino. Looks like the, is that the two ball sitting above the seven there? Or is that, yeah. Kind of tough to get shape. Got to miss the six coming around. Getting them messed up every, every, every game. That's why I watch it on my TV, it's on the big screen. Gene Pittman's in the house. It's going to be tough to kick at this ball. The eight ball really cuts off. He's going to try and kick behind the six at it. Ooh. Maybe the only way to go. Gene, Brian Gregg says hello. My only saving grace is that the five's kind of tied up, but the combination's not really tough off that five. Should be pretty easy to get shape for the combination off the ball. Don't want to sit against the rail though. Really, if the cue ball is at where it's at right now, it's pretty good. Just draw back a little. Sit right where you are right now. Yeah. Pretty close. It's gonna have to worry about that six just a little bit. Yeah, it looks like he's almost just straight in line for it. Just stop. 
stop right there and not gonna have any problems, right? Pretty good. Just gonna miss the seven coming off the second rail there. Played it well. Well, this one's almost in the books too, I'd say. Can't really see any. Put a lot of inside English on this ball to hold it. Got seven. Shot. Good shot. You can see that inside check. Looks like another game in the books. Six to three. Yeah, this was a dry break initially from Jordan, so always want to hold serve. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a 6-3 score line. Jordan Davis needs three. John needs three. John. Yeah. It's been a, it, it was really crucial, that I think, that last game when he broke dry for John to, to really need to get out. But getting hooked on the two, I mean, what can you, what can you do from there? Uh, Jordan, the only nine in the tournament today? I think so. We've got a couple eights. You got Jonah Bunch as an eight. I think Payne might be an eight. Ronnie Sogat. Ronnie Sogat's an eight. I think that's it. Seth Burton might be going to eight. I think Seth is going to eight. I think if Jordan wins this game, alarm bells have to start going off for John. It is crucial crunch time. Gene, if I could express how how much you make Brian smile right there, just having having you comment back. <laughs> I wish Gene would have showed up. I just wanted to give him six in the last four today. Six in the last four. I'll take that. Shoot. I believe uh, Babcock, he's probably an eight, too, isn't he? Um, Fred. So last time I played Fred, he only had to go to seven. Let's see. Let's see where I should Oh, yeah, Fred's an eight, too. Yeah, you're right. How can I forget about Mr. Babcock? <laughs> Brian, Greg, Probege. Well... I'm sure he heard it was going to be a, an Iron Man tournament and had to jump in. He, he doesn't like playing the two-day tournaments. I think he, uh, where he's living at is really not conducive for the drive. I think it's like an hour drive to get down here. I think he lives up in uh, Whitestown, I think it is. Or whatever, yeah, Whitestown. It's up north. Good shot. Put some inside spin here, try to get down. I think that's the two ball along the rail there. So you just want to kind of spin it down underneath this uh, six. It's not bad. Six ball kind of made the five a little tougher to get to after the four. Probably play down and make that one on the side, though. Oh. Used all the pocket there. Well, he should be out. Yeah. He yeah. Gets on this five good straight. One more good shot. Yeah. Five and 
Inside. Yeah, I don't, I don't really see much uh, much going wrong here. Just doesn't want to get flat on the six. Make sure you keep that angle. I tried to play it where I played the six and the seven in the same pocket. He's going to pinch draw it back a little bit. Just like that, pinched it over. Really the only, only way you could make it harder is sitting on the rail, but where the eight's at, I'd be surprised if we don't get out here. And really, if he just moves it up table about a foot or two, he's yeah. pretty much there. Just don't have a rush of blood and kid it up underneath the nine. All right. Yep. That's perfect. Ideal. That is ideal. One rail back up. Nine in the corner. He's going to stop the bleeding. Put the pressure back on Jordan. A little bit more distance than I would like on that ball, but hey. Gonna go down nonetheless. All right, good run out, John Z. That's gonna bring us to a six-four score line. John needing two, Jordan needing three. We've got a match. Biggest thing for Jordan here, you've got to really not commit any unforced errors. You know, if he's gonna, if John's gonna win, John needs to take it from him. Don't serve it up on a platter. Yeah, he needs to put a couple of good saves to get. Yeah, and I mean honestly, you know, to get up to the six, to half six. I mean, we've been watching him play really good stuff. Well, looks like we got a ball stuck in the table. Dude doesn't even need a stick and he shoots straight. <laughs> Gonna have another good one, uh, Payne McBride and Danny Alexander on the winner's side. That'll be a nice one. Uh, Danny Heiner, that's correct, Danny Heiner and Fred Babcock will be playing also. It's always nice to see Danny out playing. Yeah, I had a little match with Danny uh, playing some more pocket earlier tonight. Man is fearless when it comes to a bank. Fearless. <laughs> you can tell him he's playing Bustamante, playing Efren, Fedo. He don't care. He's banking at it. He'll sell out it to anybody. And then shoot your liver out. <laughs> as, it, as Earl would say. Um, no, I'm not sure who's next on our TV table just yet. Uh, we'll be waiting as we near kind of this match to, to ask. Oh. I consider that an unforced error. Didn't make the – it just wasn't really a solid break. Problem is, though, the whole table is just muddied. I think he racked himself. <laughs> you know, I uh, I was talking to Dennis Outlaw, I think, last tournament. And uh, he said that he thinks that Jordan Davis racks himself a lot in these things. Yeah, I'd imagine if he puts them balls up there a little bit better, paid a little bit more closer attention, he'll probably uh, up his rating a little bit farther. Well, I'll tell you what, man, if there's anything to learn from, you know, like Shane, it's, it's, you know, he practices the break so much. It's so important. You know, really, that's – you can only improve so much shooting-wise. And once you once you got all the skill, you got the skill. But that break is everything. Speaking of Shane, he's kind of turned on the 
the afterburners here lately. Yeah, I think uh, I think he's hitting the gear. Obviously, all the U.S. Open tournaments he always really shows up for. I think he's really wanting to break his record and get to sixth, though. I think I'd really like to see it in my lifetime. Oh, yeah. um, I personally think that's the greatest player of all time. I know most people think it's Efren. That's a great shot, by the way. But most people think it's Efren. Um, yeah, I, uh, I think Shane's definitely revolutionized the game um, in the way that he breaks and just the things that he does. I was watching an interview with Shane the other day, and uh, it was he was telling everybody how he had, wasn't fishing this uh, time of the year anymore now. Yeah. So he's uh, kind of paying a little bit more close attention. Well, and, I mean, if you think about it, you know, he's been the dominant player for, what, 20 years in America, right? And for that 20 years, he's been playing for pennies. Oh, yeah. You know, now Matchroom and Predator are really coming in and putting the money in the sport. And so, well, the greatest player is going to show us why he's the greatest player. Right. You know, I get that. That's a good shot. I get that Fedor and, you know, Filler and Copen Yi and Chung are crazy, but they're no SVB. They are no what, SVB. What he's accomplished in the last month is un yeah. you know, unheard of. Yeah, to, win, to go and win the PLP with all of those all of those people, I mean, really, really just shows the class that dude has. And he was struggling kind of towards the middle of it. He was playing like a god for the first two days of it. I think the third day maybe was. He started struggling and losing matches, but still, when he played Copen Yi in the final, that was, un I mean, oh, almost made that. Pretty nice try there. Yeah. Everybody out there watching, who's your favorite pool player? Who do you like? When you're on YouTube, who do you who do you plug in there? Is it always Efren? It's always SBB for me. Yeah, see, there you go. I've always thought he was a better player than Efren, but... Well, I mean, I think the thing, the thing about Efren was, at that time, you know... He really changed what you were, what you did with the spin. You know, it wasn't all power pool; it was artistic pool. You know. Oh, Efren, Efren definitely changed the game when he came into the mix. But yeah, you know, that, there's so many players out there now that play that. Uh, you know, Shane's got to play all those players. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, the caliber is is crazy now. The cal I mean, the only thing that I think that we're lacking is junior play here in America, but, you know, like, the caliber of players out there in, with Europe and Asia. Uh, <laughs> Captain America's the only one that's got anything for him. I mean, Sky Woodward's up there, too, but he's he's not Shane, unless it's the Moscone Cup, and then then I'm probably picking Sky. <laughs> McCready, I like that one. That's a good one. Keith McCready, and that, honestly, uh, he shot so different in comparison to some people. Yep, Kachi's a really good one. I'll tell you what, I I still think he's in close to that number one player. Um, he went and played after his uh, surgery not too long ago. I want to say it was in some match room stuff. It might have been in Predator, actually, and still shot high, high level. I think, um, you know, obviously, you got to throw Fedor and Filler in there as some of the best players. Oh, I didn't see that. Um, but, yeah, it's still SVB. All right, we got ball in hand here for John. Um, with that attempted jump, John, Jordan definitely opened up the table. It is easily runnable now. I'm not sure who's your dad, but I'm glad that you can see your dad. <laughs> See, me and little Lena want to know who. Who's the dad? Who who, who are you talking about? 
that guy says I like Kassi. Kachi, yeah. But uh, honestly, man, it's just pretty routine here. You just need to draw straight back. Cue ball about where it's at right now, if you could. Oh, no. Commentator's curse. Didn't leave the easiest cut on that five, though. Is the dad? That is the question to hand here. Who's your daddy? Who's your baby? R.I.P. Toby Keith. <laughs> Pretty good save. That's kind of what we were talking, though. I mean, you're going to have to play safes like that, get your opportunities. Guy, in, oh, okay. Jordan Davis is your dad. Yes. Your dad is a hell of a pool player. Well, I'm going to foul out here and play a match. And probably come back with the same old story. Sounds like a plan, Kevin. Good luck. All right. Thank you. All right, just as routine as it was a second ago, it's even more routine now. You know, I don't know if you know it or not, but your dad is one of the top ten pool players in Indiana, according to his rating. So we love to watch him play, too. Jordan Davis going up 7-4 to four with this nine ball. Even race to two. I believe Jordan is the only person to hold a win over Fedor Gorst in Indiana. Jordan Jordan started out on fire here, and this is back to even Steven. Well, it's, it's kind of been going back and forth a little bit. Um, John made some really good shots and has run some really good racks to get where he's at. Based on the rating, guys, it's hard to argue. Right now, Jordan is the highest one here. I've seen him do some crazy stuff on a pool table. Hey, Eric, how you doing? Good to see you. Thanks for watching. Eric, you never messaged me back. What Ooh. happened? Ooh, call him out. Call him out. <laughs> Looks like he's watching from Facebook. We got some from the YouTube channel. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Yeah, make sure you like, share, subscribe, spread it out. 1920 viewers isn't enough. Let's get it up to 30. Let's keep it PG, Eric. Of course you do. When you're the tournament director, you got control of everything. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't. Did Brian Wilson beat Fedor Gorst? He did? Okay, well, I lied. Then he's the one of two people. Then I'm sorry. Good call, Zach. Good call. I believe Ronnie Sogat is on the winner's side still. I believe he's won two matches. 
complete Troy polling first and then Seth Burton second. And it looks like we're looking at a combination here. What she made. delicate shot here. I don't know if he's going to like this one. Ooh. I can't, I don't think that ball goes up underneath the seven. But I mean, the best he got is, is to play a combination, but then the cue ball is coming all the way down this way. Yeah. Does the nine go? Uh, it's hard to tell from the angle we see here. I don't know if I pull that up. I blew it up earlier, but it, for some reason that screen was lagging. I don't know what's going on. Huh? It's the only complaint made on the internet in this area. Well, it's just a, because I run the camera off Wi-Fi. Oh, okay. It's just this building sometimes. You get all the cell phones. And Now, but. That's much better. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, no, this isn't technically live on TV, but with pool, most of the time we just stream on the internet. So it's just the same as being live on TV. It's happening right now. It can be watched from anywhere in the world on Facebook, YouTube, and my Twitch channel. Oh, Twitch channel? I used to have my own website, you know, but things didn't work out, so now I'm doing the, the three. Oh, an uncharacteristic miss. I didn't expect to see that. They leave the oh, kind of here. look at that. I'll tell you. Um, it's makeable in the side, though. Is it makeable in the side without touching the five? That I don't know. See, because I'd be worried about making the side and it coming off the rail, touching the five and scratching. That'd be my luck. Depending on the side of the cues high, he may be able to control a little bit and bump the five full versus barely flipping it. Would you just play safe down underneath the five? Playing Jordan, I'm probably going to go for this ball. Oh, missed it completely. Where is it going to end up? Oh, it's too hard. Or it's is it up? Oh. It's too hard. It's a good shot. Fantastic shot. Bad leap. Been on this match for three hours? I don't think we've been on that match for three hours. We've only been streaming for three hours. Yeah, I don't, uh, I think you should keep smoking. <laughs> I don't know what you're on, man, but your time is warped. That total time you see is, is the total time the stream has been on, not the total time of the, the match. That's what happens when you get off work and come into the middle of the stream. <laughs> Someone talk about shuffleboard? Shuffleboard. What a hit. What a hit. Oh, my lanta. I thought he made it. It went in and, and yeah. Kind of yeah. rattled back out. Yeah. Hit it really good. I'll tell you, you hit about as good as you can to not make it. Mm -hmm. Just want to avoid the nine. Yep. We got a little straight here. Not bad. Not bad at all. Jordan Davis with a 7-9 to go up on the hill. Yeah, yeah, I can think for sure he's on the hill after that. 
seen him make some easy errors, though, but you don't see it very often. No, and I, I mean, really, I wasn't expecting the last miss, but that's all not, you know, it doesn't matter now. Jordan Davis on the hill, 8-4. to four. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the effort that he put in, I mean, he... Hit it good enough to make the, it. I thought he made the five. Yeah. I thought we thought it was in. Yeah. What was the score? Three, two. Vince Pester has fallen into the loser side of the bracket. He's going to play the winner of David Heiner and Steve Freaky. She's my horse. She didn't want herself. She didn't want herself. I bought her for 20. Why not? She's a three. All right. Jordan Davis to break for the match. One ball on the side. Oh, what a great break to go ahead and run out the match. Ladies and gentlemen, no tied up balls. This is going to be filler quick. Made three balls on the break. Yeah, just draw back. You're done. I mean, yeah, this is this is the Cosmo. Not really a lot of work. I can't. The the only the only problem is from the five to the seven. Yeah, that's I it. I can't tell from the angle if it to go past the set or past the nine. So he's probably going to have to draw and, and play the in the top right. Corner. Yeah, if he doesn't want to draw it, he can play it two two rails around. I don't really like doing that, but I would draw it myself. Just draw all over to the side rail. Going two rails, you take a risk of crashing into the nine, then you lose control of what happens. Yeah, look at that. That is textbook. You're going to see him play one rail up, eight ball, one rail down. Oh, we went two rails. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Jordan Davis with a break and run to win the match with this nine ball. Good deal. You guys don't realize how tough it is for a nine to, to, to come out and win a game or a match because of the alternate break. Yeah, um, you know, really the weight that you got to give up to be a nine, mm -hmm. you know, mentally you have to be so tough. You know, because you lose a couple couple games on some bad rolls, and they're on the hill. Right. Yeah, it doesn't, you know, it, you, you make a mistake, and they catch a couple good rolls, and, and you know what I mean? And yeah. everybody plays on the high board's capable of breaking run on the rack. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when, and when you break like that, you're almost expected to run out, too. Yeah. You know, there's probably no better, I don't know, there's probably no better feeling for me than, Break and run in the last rack on the hill. No doubt. What do we got coming on the TV table next? Let's see. Marcus match is over. Yeah. Why don't we throw up? Uh, Josh Lady and Trent Vaughn. All right, I think that's a good one. I'm going to go step outside for a quick second. I'll be right back. See you guys in a second. You're, good. You're all right.
Gotcha. Hey, one, right? Right, Payne McBride beats Danny Alexander eight to one. Yeah, we do appreciate everybody tuning in. I'm going to give a shout out to our sponsors this season Hooted Billiards, Diamond Billiard Products, Jay Flowers Pool Paint, Case, Stolpe's Custom Tools and Repairs, Emoji Q, Danimation, Indian Expert Construction, and A12 Top Notch Tree Service. Always looking for new sponsors. If you've got any leads on some sponsors, be sure to send them our way. Let's Send it to our Facebook page or send us a message. Josh Lady, that's right, he's a lady. Chris Vault and Josh Lady are getting ready to start. Again, be sure to hit that like, follow. Like, follow, share the stream. Public school. You want down here? Yeah, go ahead. I wanted to do walking. So we have to. I mean, you can, you can do it if you want. No, Walker's not on. Uh, I want to talk about it. <laughs> All right, I fell victim to Josh. So. What did he say that school? What was that school, Dennis? Like I uh, get to play Dennis Outlaw next whenever we're up, so that'll be a fun one. Mm -hmm. He's full time. <laughs> How to do it? All I wanted to do, you know what I mean? I love pool that much. Got Payne McBride in the house, standing next to me. Yeah, let's get Payne McBride in the booth. See if he doesn't end up playing, we'll see if we can get him in here. Yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Hoosier Nine Ball Open Tour presented by Blue Tip Billiards. This is stop six at Brickyard Billiards. You've got Josh Lady against Trent Vaughn and even race to seven. Should have fireworks. Both men shoot fantastic. Another good match going on currently. You've got Ronnie Sogat going up against Mike Davis Sr. Keep you updated as the score goes on with that. Wayne Pearson's going to have to play Jordan Davis. I'm going to try and uh, see if we can get Fred Babcock and Payne McBride on the TV table. That'd be nice, but I think they might be playing elsewhere. I'm not really sure, Zach. I'm not sure if the table doesn't rack well or if it's just kind of the balls are dirty. I mean, we play here a lot, so we, we definitely know that there's some dead spots on all the tables. Looks like we've got a dry break. Well, if you're going to break, this is the way to break. You don't want to really leave anything super offensive. I believe Trent Vaught won our lap. Stop. Stop five at John Wayne's. Looks like he's going to be pushing. Really sure what the big question is here. There's two brackets. Are you looking for the low bracket or are you looking for the high bracket? Jason, if you go to the Hoosier Nine Ball Open Tour page, you'll find the link to the bracket. What he said. <coughs> or, or I guess I could be a nice guy and swap over and put it in the chat and see if that helps. That's not a bad option either. Good shot by Trent. Pretty good shape on the two here. There you go. You got your brackets. Are they playing right now? Uh, not yet. Okay, that'd be a good one to have here. Mm -hmm. That would be a good one. I mean, that would be probably also a good one, but to have him back on there would be a little, a little extreme. That's why I didn't put them up next. Right. Yeah, so it looks like it, maybe that's what we'll do. We'll probably put the young gun Payne McBride and Fred Babcock up on the TV table next. Ladies and gentlemen, I've spoken into existence. I didn't know if they were playing already. No, they're not. That's going to be a really good one. No. 
Yo no sé. <risa> Yeah. yeah, you're going to be up to the next table. Actually, there is a couple tables on the other board. You're right. I got to switch them over so I don't we don't schedule two matches on the same table. Right. Yeah, let me switch the table, then I'll call you right up. Kind of a touchy little shot here to get on the five. Oh, a little love rub on the nine. Uh, Diet Mountain Dew. Again, come support Breakyard Billiards. Definitely come try their food. It's fantastic. One of the pizzas I talked pizza about earlier, great. Mr. Watson just got one in front of me. It's loaded to the brim. That's right. It's going away. Personally, I'm uh, just a sausage pepperoni kind of guy. Sausage, pepperoni, mushrooms, onions, banana peppers. Nope. You got me. It's all you. Hole in one. This ain't golf. I don't know what these folks are watching. I don't know, but everybody in the chat, make sure you react, like, subscribe, all that stuff for us, okay? Yes, you're not new. Yes, please. The closest thing we got to a hole in one is a nine ball off the break, and that doesn't count in today's tournament as a win. Really good out by Trent here. Showing why he won the last tournament. Trick plays really good. He gets game number one. Game number one does go to Trent Vaught. He made a, I think he missed a couple events, but he has done well enough that he's almost in the top two of the points. Yeah, I think uh, if he were to place, I think he's in there this time. Yeah, if he does, it has another good turnout. You can't never count him out because he plays solid. No, I was looking based on the scores. Like I think, if I would have, if I win it, I think I'll go up in the top three. <laughs> um, if Trent wins, he'll go up in the top ten for sure. Um, Danny wins. Danny would go up in the top three too. Danny would be in the top, probably the top. Mushrooms and banana peppers. And uh, Joe, how much money did uh, Brian say he's got for the Indy Cup? Um, I don't know. That's for the points rate. Oh, that's, the that's just the points. The okay. The points okay. rate. Okay. I'm not sure exactly what the Indy Cup is at yet. Okay. So We're trying need... to work out some other deals to. Okay. Because he said he said he said if we can get a place where we can put a predator table, yeah, the predator may give us five thousand. You hear that, everybody? Work, we're still working the details out on that one. But the, for the points race, it's at 3,800. And that's the, whoever wins the points gets the 3,800 uh, plus whatever else, right? We pay, we pay out the top four's points box. Okay. okay. Uh, last just... year's, well, the last year, last year winner first and second split. So they got, they ended up splitting 13 something a piece. But I think first place was like 2,100 for last season. Was there anybody here today? Um, uh, it's not here today that was in the points race? That is not here. It's in the top ten? Brian doing that here. I can see the four. Right Use good old technology. Oh, yeah, you've got it in a post, right? Chase is here. Troy was here. Danny was here. Marty was here. Brian was here. Matt was here. Pete was here. Yeah, everybody yeah, here. Top here. twelve, top twelve players here. The reason why I posted the top twelve, we got you know we got three players tied for second. Now, at what point, like the top four spots at this point are pretty locked up. Like as far as like those players, even if they didn't, unless they just did, unless if they missed, then those guys at the bottom 
if they right. keep coming, they can catch Right, them. but I mean, really, at this point, as long as the people in the top six, definitely, I, like, where I'm at below, I mean, as long as we keep coming, I think we're going to get in there. Correct. For me, personally, um, you know, my biggest whole thing was to try and get in the top ten for the points and try and do this when I came out. This is the first time I've really played in right. the tour. Um, you know, obviously, trying to do something historic here for Indiana, right? I wouldn't say historic as far as it's that's a that's a tough role for Josh here, but uh, going into the eighth year, I think bringing Brian in has been a, a big thing as far as making the turnout and making some changes that we've made. Be taking on that other job, so I don't always control my weekends off anymore. So I needed somebody to step up. Brian's going into that spot to run these tournaments. Uh, do appreciate that, and he brought some other good ideas, which has helped the turnout of the tournament. Right? Uh, we're going to split brackets. And it's going to be huge. We're going to start having some once it gets out there. You know, the payouts and stuff. We gain more sponsorship. Just payouts and stuff. Right. The Phillips group is keep going. Well, you know, it'd be really nice to attract some of your really high high level caliber players out to it, and um, the only thing that's going to do that is money. High, 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 high added amounts of money. Right, right. You know, if Predator gets involved, good hit by Josh. If Predator gets involved, that'd be really nice. I mean, having Brian in connection with them, right? That's kind of inv you know invaluable. But I think we're, for this season, we've really gone in the right direction. The fields have been being bigger. Uh, splitting was a huge thing. That it gets more lower skill players out. Feel like they have a chance to right. get money or whatever. Right. Well, I mean, there's not you know when you can draw a Ronnie or a a Fred or, or a Payne McBride, and you you know you're only a 300 Fargo or a 400 Fargo. I mean, like. That's rough. <laughs> right. Mentally, you just don't, you're like, why, why even show up? You know, for for anybody wondering, you know, like, how good these players play. I mean, Payne McBride was out there playing Sky Woodward, taking him to the hill. Twice. Twice. I mean, playing Carlo Beato Banks, hanging with him. You know, playing one pocket, hanging. I mean, these kids He's playing on a mini table with Josh Filler. Yeah, I think he won that. <laughs> you know, and it, it's you know watching him play, watching Savannah Easton come up, Sophia Mast, really makes you super excited for the future of of the youth pool here in America. Having the Predator tours, having those um, you know youth tournaments that Matrim's doing, like the SVB Open, the Jason Shaw Open, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz Open. You know, that stuff really is going to elevate the game come 20 years from now in ways that hopefully we don't we don't see yet. A little bit of update. David Heiner has fallen out of the tournament. He is out, ladies and gentlemen. Miranda Babcock up against Chase Haney. Now that's a good match. All right, we're going to have to change the score here. I believe Trent Vaught is up two, I think. Sorry about that. We're just kind of getting carried away talking. Looks like he made a ball in the corner pocket closest to uh, Trent's name there. We're going to have June Cho against Jared Haney. That'll be a good one. I think they're coming to play now. Pretty good shot from Josh Lady. Kind of been flirting at the top end around 19 to 23 viewers. Again, make sure you like and share so we keep that number going up coming up on the TV table after this match I believe we're going to have Payne McBride and Fred Babcock 
Yeah, and I mean, you know, as far as talent in Indiana go, Fred's up there with the best of them. He's put in a lot of work to be where he's at. You know, I look up to him personally. I've learned a lot from him. So, let's see how he handles the young gun. Oh, Josh hung the bank. Another match coming up is going to be Jonah Bunch against John C. We just watched John C. lose to Jordan Davis, so he's going to draw another tough one. I hadn't myself watched Jonah Bunch play before. Only really heard about Jonah um, and he plays jam up. Kind of worrying signs early for Josh. Womp womp. Nothing but solid work from Trent Vaughn. Play this. That's pretty good. Two rails using that second rail. All right. Trent has gone up another game, so the current score is going to be 3 nothing. Well, it doesn't help that Josh is kind of leaving him easy, easy ends. Going back to that Indy Cup, I was talking to Brian a little bit. He's talking about uh, maybe having the uh, the event at that new place, our spot. Well, I, I talked to him about that this morning. That yeah. I told him that might be a good spot. Yeah, and I, honestly, I'm sure that, you know, they'd like the exposure. Um, I, uh, I'm i a member there myself. It's a, it's a really nice, chill place. Um, I don't know, you know, if uh, they'd be willing to move one of the, the bar boxes kind of to the side, you know, for the event. I'm not really sure how that would work for them, but, you know, getting in on all the social medias and all that, that would be, be really cool. Both the, the men on the screen right now are both chasing the top ten. I think he was trying to play safe there. Just really didn't, uh, didn't get everything out of the cue ball. Actually, no, I lied. That was the nine ball that was going around. I think he was shooting the nine and then missed pretty bad, but came out came out pretty good. Looks like he's trying to jump on top of the ball. Oh my God. You don't have any replay option, do you? There is an option. I just ain't never figured out how to do it. Well, my time's going to come to an end here. i got to go play Dennis Elmo on table 13. I didn't pay attention to that.
called that one, huh? All right. Good luck.
sure I put the score to it.
Let me get the board up here for a little bit. This is one of our judges that was a lifetime teacher for us.
pretty sure it was killing him. <laughs> Close the store. You're on table four.
say was five. Why are they all working on it? Who do we call that person? Yeah, Steve over here. You can call them. Yep, Tim Moore.
Fred Babcock. Brian Doan sitting in the commentary booth again. I just got to put out the tournament lock for the world series. Dennis Outlaw. Shane McBride for break. down. Got a shot on three before a ball was struck. Cut this in. You'd be putting a crazy amount of spin on it to try and go two rails in from lane four. Tried to push through the nine ball to get on the floor and it didn't really didn't really get there. Off the easy kick, one rail at it. Zach, I did not. I lost Kill Hill. And to be quite frank with you, I was really cost myself the match. Um, I think of at least two or three wrecks that I was down to the seven or the eight ball. that 
Super easy. You could easy. You could definitely bank the ball in. You could cut the ball in. Cut's pretty tough. Major Payne McBride. What he needs to do. I think he's going to opt to bank the ball in the key ball up the side rail. Save. Didn't get him up underneath the pines this time, but I think Fred's going to have the edge of it. At least going to be able to return something. I think here his option is to try and split the four ball and the two ball on the side rail. The side rail trying to use the six as cover. I don't really see any way that he can get all the way back around the table and try to get him up underneath the side from here. Body language, it looks like he's gonna have a shot. It's okay.
banking on Probably gonna push right into the woods. It's the two woods over the side rail. Skeleton in there. Some of the best pop popcorn I've ever had. Bought from the zoo. Thanks, though. Say this is bound. What's on?
about that. He went and smoked it. He went and thought he was on the food. Fred can't be too upset with how all that turned out. The work to do is probably to check the ball with one tight hand and see. Press the rail and see if it's even. He needed to get back up and down. At the point, Six and Rick Carfillier. Fifth inning again, you're playing against Fred Carfillier. And nine ball, all game third. Really, not many are allowed, but you have to call them, so Slob's not going to lose his game. At least for the ninth. Interesting thing here is to go ahead and come back to make the six easy, but we've got some little twist here. So we might have to play for the six in the same. Don't look at him to make it make the, the cut inside, but really hard to work the cue ball when you hit the ball so thin. Well, shout out to all the sponsors as they show up on the screen over here on the left. Notch tree service. It's going to be Justin Luttrell. We're missing him today. There's Blue Tip Billiards. If you haven't been there, definitely check it out. It's a great place to play. Very own Rack and Joe's live stream. Got to miss the nine. Oh, and he might be hooked by the nine. And that's just what I was saying. It's hard to work the cue ball when you hit the ball so thin.
probably try to kick into this up underneath the eight. Trying to push the eight, honestly, into the corner pocket. Opposite of where he is, but really hoping that the three ball comes in behind the ninth. One thing the pros were the best at is the kicking tip. See if he shows why he's a pro. Kick and stick. Ladies and gentlemen, look at that. Didn't quite get there. The ball's going to be visible. But the kick did definitely sit there after he hit it. It's animation. Custom cue repair. I think this is crucial, crucial ball for the overall set to play out. Fred's fired it in. Put a lot of bottom. It was perfect shape on the nine. That's Indiana's very own Fred Babcock. Heard some different nicknames for Fred over the years. Big Bastard is one I've heard. But honestly, just Mr. Reliable. Take the player's timeout. those of you out there, I had asked this question earlier today, who is your favorite new player in history? Mine would definitely be, I personally believe, the greatest player of all time. Second game. Filler and Dort seem to be able to possibly take that mantle. It's really tough because you got Kopeny and you got Ben Chung. You got to throw them in there in the top three, but certainly. guys feel about score, pressure, score, like one here. Do you, uh, do you like the Predator format? Two races to four with a shootout. Do you like that? Or are we a fan of the PLP and matchups putting on? Or do we like the break box in the match? The break belt that they're putting on a lot of tape. Tables now for viewership reasons to hopefully help be able to see what ball is what. <laughs> Back from the it's four to two.
the break. Looks like you got a ball down. Two child one. Open some bottom here to try and draw in the side rail. They'll come back in between the five and four, kind of center of the table there. Looks like the four is easily shootable into the side, so really once you get perfect off the first ball, there's not a whole lot to do after that. Oh, he's calling the nine. A little surprised. to stop the cue ball kind of where the two ball is going to be at. You don't need to do anything crazy with it. Again, the four ball does go. The only thing you, you don't want to shoot the four ball is put the up towards the rail. That kind of pretty good where it is. Stop right there. Looks like it's a stop, stop shot. Really, the last three or four. See how to do that. Thank you. Better. Alright, how's that for you, Dale? I'll be able to add the score line, so bear with me. Your name 
Out there watching, please let me know um, how the sound is. I've been so on there that's a little rough. I'm gonna go and see if I can look at the screen myself. And Fred Babcock to break. Salad break. Doesn't look like the nine pack, which is seven. thing I can see doing here playing the combination and trying to bring these people back in hoping that the one ball doesn't get tied up. <laughs> Gonna be playing another combination from the one to the three. that well. Pretty good angle to keep that to go down for the five. You're going to be looking at the five and the six in the same pocket. And not enough. You're looking for the five in the opposite pocket. Then the six. And the reason I could think that he plays there is to keep the angle guaranteed on the six to come around. Hold. The seven might pass the without the football touch in the nine, I can't tell. So in order to get where he was, he's going to put some inside spin to come down, touch the rail. He got a little straighter than he wanted, I think. question in this rack is whether or not the seven will go. Based on the body language, I'd say it will. Need to stop the ball there. Got to use the rail to come up right where he's at. Shall we watch so that there's no question as to the validity, validity of the We should so we all know that. The question mark here, does the nine ball impede the progress to get to the eight? Trying to miss the nine completely. Lanced it. He's able to go ahead and pull the cue ball back to the hard hand. Thank you. 
Jamie McBride for break. Separate the way I expected it to. One ball shot over towards like the middle diamond. Shooting the shot, double hit off the double hit off the stick. Don't really anticipate the press. Jordan Davis did beat Dwayne Pearson. Currently, Ron Sogat is playing Trent Vaught. Straight in, he is. It's actually it's really good. Um, you want to be able to manipulate the top spin to come back to the six. You, you really don't want to have to draw the ball. Right, if he's straight in, drawing the ball straight back towards the five. I mean, you can play to, to move the five, but then you can, you can try to change the pocket a little bit and you draw it. I did see him point to the side rail over there by the six. So I'm looking for him to follow the ball. I think he's got some kind of angle there. Oh. Looks like he put the wrong spin on it, but he's going to end up okay. Wow. Honestly, probably worked out for the best. Natural to fall forward. Get a six down here by Payne Payne. Big hesitation here is not you know, coming too far and then getting it right on the six. I think it would be my only complaint. Here. Good 
Tidy out my friend here. Again, he did get a little bit lucky to get such a good shape. Man, short you know, side of five, but hey, that's my right, ball. <laughs> to go up six to three. Solid. Solid play, my friend. Back up. He is breaking. I'm thinking it's Brian. If you want it, let us know what you like or don't like about the stream so we know how to be better in the future. We've had some really good improvements this year to the tour. For me personally, it's my first year being a part of the tour. I am very pleased to be in the top five as far as the overall points is concerned. We get in these monster players like Red, like Payne, like Jonah. Ronnie Sogod, all of these people are crazy, crazy good players. So to compete with them is really an honor. Abel tried to go, but it did not. I don't think he's going to get anything down. Open shot on the wall. Uh, when Josh. Okay. How much blue did you get? Wait for it and give me the score. Seven. Seven. Josh is in the final six. Yeah, Josh. That's not good. Let's race. He's going to try to come down between the six and seven. Take the first. Good on. 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 the chance to meet Paige. Definitely encourage conversation with him. Probably one of the nicest kids I've ever met. Telly, love it, cool. Think about it. Well, to me, it's very good.
Overall commentary rule that Kevin Walker is not allowed to sit behind me. Boy, is he a loud talker. Just follow the ball down. It's not even long. Go up seven. Alright, break. What this other break is here is going to be the second time. Where, where am I at? We're in the final 16. score is Fred Babcock 8, Payne McBride 2.
Coming up next, we're going to have Payne McBride versus Dennis Outlaw. Personally, I'm upset I didn't get Dennis. I would have liked to play Payne myself. So I played him twice. Took him to the hill the first time. And he ended up getting uh, fortunate enough to take him to the hill the second time. So I will be back for the next match. What the hell you got on you over here? I'm wired up. I have to go to the other more Give me The bells and some parts in Spain is all right now. Let's say. Once, once these two matches are done, we'll be right back at it again. Good plan now. Right? Oh, George. Yeah. Yeah, we're waiting on the other two to get done. 
No, I say we got to win. We got to win one more. We don't check. Make sure I'm right. I'm just wondering how much you really want to check. But you still have to lose. Yeah. Thank 
everyone say
Okay, guys, here we are. Coming in late on this man. Dennis Al Paul. Payne McBride here to the Nine Ball Tour. They're playing to go into the final 16. 
Who won that game? Dennis? Dennis Southall makes a 2 1 lead over Cam Fry. Justin Moore is playing today as well as they go into the final 16. Hey, Ernie. Hey, Ernie. Nice little draw right there. I can't hear. Oh, is it on? Yeah, you're good. You're good. There was a lot of little static. Yeah, that's perfect now. Yep. Dennis can get out right here. Kind of a natural shot. Don't have to do nothing fancy. So Dennis goes to six, no seven. Payne McBride goes to eight. Some of y'all can't or haven't seen. You can get an update on the bracket to who's your nine ball tour open, high board and low board. I want a little bit. Well, yeah, I like that. Don't have to do nothing fancy here. Just make it kind of float off the end rail a little bit. Create a natural angle. There you go. I hear you just use a little bit of draw, not much. Stun your shot. Looks like you got a little bit of an angle on that. And Dennis Outlaw takes a 3-1 lead over Payne McBride. Dennis goes to seven. Payne goes to eight. Eight seven. I think Payne took a little bit of a break. I think it's Dennis. No, we're the one 
Yeah. It'll probably, probably take me 30 minutes. And we're back. Dennis and Brake. He's up two to one. Nice little break there. He made the nine ball, it looks like. Nine ball spots on this tour. And the shooter continues to shoot. Next year, we're going to switch this up to where if you make the nine on the break, you finish shooting until the nine ball spot. Or then you spot the nine after you're done shooting. Nice little bang. Uh oh, scratch. Wow. Wow. Payne shouldn't have no problem getting out here. I think five to the seven is the only difficulty. Shouldn't be too difficult, though, after. Not sure I'd use that in rail. I think I'd create an angle where I just went immediately to the side rail. He's trying to, or maybe he's just gonna float up the table a little bit.
All right, so a uh, little bit of a back cut on this eight, not too bad. Probably a little bit tougher of a shot than what he wanted to leave himself. I'm just going to shoot it with just a little bit of low left, not much. So the final 16, we have low side. We have Marty Weber, Randy Bratz, Daniel Bartlett, Bill Lady, Steve Fricky, Aaron Flick, Mark Baxter, Jared Haney. High side, we have Ronnie Saugat, Trent Vaught, Jordan Davis, Fred Babcock, Josh Lady, Mike Davis Sr., Dwayne Pearson, and the winner of this match, which is tied at two to two. I do believe it is Payne's break. Like sent out to our sent a little what? Oh, never mind. Like to thank our sponsors, Blue Tip Billiards. Rackham Joe live stream. Diamond Billiards. Jay Flowers. Hughes. Danimation. Stoltman's custom cues and repair. Emoji cues. And top notch tree service. Justin Luttrell himself. Usually here we miss him today. He couldn't make it. A lot of players couldn't make it due to Easter. That is a little issue that early in the season we scheduled the whole entire season and didn't realize that this was Easter weekend. Well, Joe scheduled them. Usually Easter's in April. So we decided to limit the field, run it one day. That way everybody can be with their families. That's it. That's what I said. Joe, that's what I was just saying. All my life, I've always thought Easter was in April. <laughs> always. Joe, uh, is there going to be a time more than he said eight hours or something? I can't even remember. We're at six right now. Okay, gotcha. So whenever you start from the other end, I'll start from that. Uh, restart it. Well, he's found himself kicking the ball here. Good little hit. Oh, looky here. Oh, almost got behind that four ball, it looks like.
Well, I kind of like parking this three ball right behind that the ball next to it and off the side rail. Float the cue ball just behind the five. A little bit of low left. Don't have to hit it that hard. I think that's what he's going to try to do. He might be trying to go down to the nine ball, though. Oh, he cut the ball. Okay. What a shot. A nice little shot there. If he can control this ball, which is hard to shoot a slow shot on these cables. Might have to give a little speed and do some trust coming back around, but I think he could slow roll it and hold the cue ball right there for the ball on the side. shot it with speed but see you know when he cut that ball last shot you're kind of relying on the cue ball flying and just hoping you get shape when in reality if you park it back behind that ball in the in rail and take your cue ball down behind the nine now you might get back at the table with ball in hand or a straight in shot or something then you're in control of the game Dennis should have no problem getting out here Just float the ball over and get on that ball on the side. And any way you get on it, you're going to get on the seven. Draw back a little bit. Me, I would probably just go ahead and draw back all the way to this side rail where the seven is. Then all you have to do is just draw straight back on the eight. You don't have to mess around trying to go around the table or draw across the middle. Okay, so he's elected to, I would say he might go three rows around. Might be drawn across the table, too. Yeah, three rails. That shot's, you know, it's very easy to overdo it on that shot. And Dennis Outlaw takes a 3-2 lead. <clears throat> like I say, folks, the winner of this match reaches the final 16. Once again, we have low side Marty Weber, Brandy Bratz, Daniel Bartlett, Bill Lady, Steve Fricky, Aaron Flick, Mark Baxter, Jared Haney. High side, Ronnie Saugat, Trent Vaught, Jordan Davis, Fred Babcock, Josh Lady, Mike Davis Sr., Dwayne Pearson and the winner of this match. Nice little break. Dennis breaks pretty good. He's got a nice little pop. Looks like he teeters his elbow. Controls that cue ball. I mean, when I say control the cue ball, he doesn't lose control where it runs all over the place. Probably came back a little farther than he wanted. The idea is to keep that cue ball somewhere in the middle. Imagine being in the middle right now and having this first shot. Jennifer Rubawal. How you doing, Jennifer?
See, now I said one ball, and that ball's the five. Okay, that's the difference on this small screen. Sometimes it's a little tricky on them colors. We had the big screen pulled up earlier, but if for some reason it was lagging. Welcome, Jennifer. We're sitting here watching Mr. Payne go Payne, huh? Payne had a tough match in his last match against Fred Babcock. Of course, Fred's playing good. Uh, it was a battle there for a little bit. Uh, Fred got him. Now, Dennis Outlaw, obviously being the player he is, he won the tour two years in a row, and then last year he split. First to second, I believe. Uh, I could be wrong. He may have t uh, taken second. But he's always a contender. Well, he, well, it's the same kind of shot he had earlier. Just put a lot of low right. Go to that side rail and draw it right back over where his hand is. Where the chalk is on the rail. Shoots that ball good. I think I would have tried to get a little bit deeper. Middle diamond at least. I think the difference in that shot is he, he punched it, which takes English off the ball. So he didn't come back as far, but he's still okay. Dennis Outlaw taking a 4-2 to two lead. Dennis goes to 7. Payne goes to 8. Payne's break. See if Payne can get going here. He gets a good break, maybe run out, get back to three. Well, you know, it's always one of those things there to where you miss the cross side and goes two rails and hooks him. You know, he's kicking. Kind of a bad roll there, I think. Now he's got to hope to hit the 
right side of this ball. See, I'd probably come a little bit long. There you go. Go a little bit longer. That way you can get to the back of that ball and maybe go off that side rail down behind that nine. And looks like the three ball to me. Now, if you don't trust that, you got to give it a little juice and just kick it hard and hope for the best. I like to line these up to where I got a possible cross side as well if I'm kicking it straight into it. Just like that, but a little too soft. That's the only bad thing about that. I think I would have tried to maybe hit that, hit that uh, back side of it and went down by the three with the cue ball. This ain't no gimme here. This is a tough little shot to gauge is where the cue ball is going. The two looks like it goes, but where's the cue ball go? Hey, Joe. Hey. No problem. I need eight of them. Upstairs is good. They can have those. How about I take it over here? Okay. Goes back to back here here in a minute. Goes back to back here in a minute by the billiard table. Goes to the old. separated from the frame. Stay away. Yeah. Well, Dennis got ball in hand here. Um, boy, this would be tough for Payne if Dennis goes up five to two because Dennis goes to seven. With Dennis breaking. This shouldn't be too hard of an act, especially where the eight is. Just get down there and just stop the ball right there at the nine. And Dennis takes a five to two lead.
well. That break right there, wow. Made three balls of scratch. That's tough. Is it 6-2? Oh, okay. Thank you. I thought it was 5-2. Okay, just give everybody an update. It is 6-2, Dennis Outlaw. Going to 7. I was behind the game there. That might be about the fifth, sixth time somebody has come and corrected me on my lots of mistakes I make. Well, Payne's been struggling a little bit. Looked like he uh, definitely overstroked that ball. You can always tell when a player's not in rhythm and he's got a little bit of struggle in him. Well, here he doesn't have to be as precise. He's got that nine for a little help with the cue ball. So I think the idea would probably be about where he's at that first time. But don't want to go no farther than that. Now, I definitely would have stayed off the rail. That rail causes confusion to where he doesn't have as much control. Especially using a bridge on a rail would have jacked up just a little bit. See? Wow. I think I would have got level, bridge off the rail, got my cue level, stroke through the ball, caromed off the nine, and then came around two rails to get on the eight.
pain goes up to three, six to three, pains break. All right, folks, I've got to take a bathroom break. Uh, hopefully I'll make it back before this match is over. If not, stay tuned. We will be back here within the next 15 to 30 minutes with a very nice match on the TV table down to the final 16. Thank you for watching the Hoosier Nine Ball Tour.
kid, Jonah? <laughs> All right, I made it back in time. What do we got here? Pain still trying to stay alive. Playing a safety. Oh, he was going for the bank. Didn't look like the bank would go to me. I think I would have played safe back there behind that nine ball. Now, Dennis can come off the right side of this five, use a little bit of right-hand English, go down to that bottom corner where he's at, and just hope for the best to get behind that seven. Oh, he's going for the bank. He was going for the kill. Don't look like you have no problem here. I mean, I think I'm going to stun between the eight and nine, maybe, and come off that end rail back around. But let's see, you just roll right off the right side of that nine, then play seven up the corner. Yeah, that was the only problem about stunning through there, trying to come off that ball. Nice little shot right there. Well, there's not a whole lot you can do here, but just kick hard and hope for the best. I mean, he could come off the end rail at the right angle and hit the seven, stick the cue ball, and then push the seven over in front of the eight to that side rail. But he'd have to kick easy speed. shoot it hard. Payne should be out. And Payne gets to four. He's climbing one game at a time. Dennis on the hill. Payne needs four. Once this set is done, we will be back in about 30 minutes to start the final 16. We probably will have to cut off and then restart due to the time limit. But stick with us. We got some exciting matches coming up, especially on this high side. We got next match TV table will probably be Jordan Davis and Fred Babcock or Ronnie Saugat and Trent Vaught. Some of you viewers 
give me your opinion on who you'd like to see. We always like for you guys to watch. So whatever match you think would be the best one to put up, feel free to comment and let us know. Also, if you're on, comment, like, share. Blue Tip Billiard presents the Hoosier Nine Ball Open Tour Stop 6 at Brickyard Billiards. We use Blue Tip Billiards as the presenting because they're one of our major sponsors on this tour. Ryan Kane. What's up, Ryan Kane? How are you, sir? Okay, you got Jordan coming up, huh? Jerry Summers. How you doing, Jerry? You got Jordan coming up as well. Ryan Kane. Don't forget some of you guys, April 20th, I'm having a split bracket eight ball tournament. John Wayne's Bar and Grill, 128 players. We have 84 on the low side, full. Uh, I do believe uh, we have around, uh, oh, I have to look, but I do believe somewhere around 28 to 30 on the high side looking for more high side players going to be a dynamic tournament hundred dollar entry um just an awesome tournament we're looking forward to tomorrow evening i'm going to post the list of the uh, low side full field and i'll post a list on the high side Well, this, uh, that's a good little spot to leave that for pain. I mean, me, myself, I'm shooting it in the corner, taking the cue ball over to the side rail there by the side pocket and floating out. So I think you can use a little left, which will make that cue ball veer off to that side rail quicker than following it to the side. That way you can shoot level just like that. Well, it looks like he might be cutting it in the side. Yeah. Well, not a bad shot. I mean, it's not a bad shot for the side pocket, but maybe he can just roll up really easy and stay right there to that, come off the rail a little bit. Now, if he shoots it too easy and lands the cue ball on that side rail, it's going to be tough on that seven, no matter if it looks straight in or not. That's what he's looking at. See, he wants to come off that rail a little bit to have control. Oh. I'm not sure if that ball goes. A tough little spot he left it there.
Now the eight ball's got the bank block, so he could roll the six up to the end rail. Looks like he's going for it. He's thinking twice. Boy, that's awful tough because if he scratches, game's over. It's kind of a little tricky spot to leave it. Or he could roll up real soft and touch the right side of the six to where he leaves a bank. Either way it goes, it's a little bit tough. I think I'd take my chances on the in rail. He's kicking the ball. Oh, wow. Well, good try, but I'm not sure I would have took that shot. I mean, like right here, it's stop, 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 and shoot. At least he would have made him work whether he would have laid the ball up close and left him a bank or pushed the ball to the in rail. I thought it was a stop, but there was a little bit of angle on it. Now, this is a shot that he was trying to set up a second ago. All right, Dennis Outlaw takes the uh, match at 7 4. We're down to the final 16. We have Marty Weber, Brandy Bratch, Daniel Bartlett, Bill Lady, Steve Fricky, Aaron Flick, Mark Baxter, Jared Haney, High Side, Ronnie Salgott, Trent Vaught, Jordan Davis, Fred Babcock, Josh Lady, Mike Davis Sr., Dwayne Pearson, Dennis Outlaw. Stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll be back here in about 30 minutes. And it looks like we're going to have Jordan Davis, Fred Babcock up on the TV next. Not sure. Okay, yeah, we're good. Yeah.